special guest <laughs> hey guys welcome to the wind down i'm so sorry for technical difficulties it was on my part the stream was just not having it uh so we're just gonna pretend none of it happened i didn't even have time to grab my alcohol i was like you should have asked the ladies i was like having a meltdown so my name is minnie May. i am one of the hosts for the wind down and i have wine in the fridge and i'm gonna quickly go grab it while the rest of the ladies introduce themselves <laughs> All right, guys. Hi, I'm Lena Sanguine. I do not have wine today. In instead, I have my usual glass of Fanta. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Nero. Uh, you guys caught the middle of my dinner. Sorry. I at the moment I have a butter toffee milkshake. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> very, very delicious. Very great. Uh, I'll probably switch to some wine a bit later on. Mm. Hi, I'm Lady Bathory. I've got a headache and I don't have anything to drink right now, but I will probably get something later. Mm. <laughs> and today we have a very special guest joining us today. He is one of my Dark Forces teammates and a great friend of mine. Very own Scastrim! Ha! I, I also don't have anything to drink except for hot sauce. <laughs> hot sauce? <laughs> yeah. It's in this nifty skull container. Which we caught. No, oh, there we can that's see. Nice. It. Sorry, I just realized his camera's being weird again. That's weird. Right. That's annoying. I see we 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 maxed though. I have a I have a I have a skull. No no you're fine you can do it it's just because for some reason it was picking up my edge skull. There you go. <laughs> yeah, for some reason the cameras seem to be all over the place guys. I'm sorry I did try to set it up properly, but it's just it's not having it, so we're just gonna deal with what it looks like. You can <sighs> me. It's my fault. Yeah, it's all his fault with his fancy I'm camera. No, I gotta stream at ten eighty P so Skull, thank you so much for joining us today. Luna has invited you to the wind down to give us tips and tricks into streaming. So how long have you been streaming for? Oh, about four years now, give or take a few months. Oh, wow. What got you mm -hmm. into streaming? Gaming and wanting to meet people that actually shared a gaming interest. I told you guys before this started that I used to be in accounting and finance. In yeah. Fortune 100 accounting and finance, there aren't that many people that are actually interested in anything other than like traveling or raising kids. <laughs> Nobody has any hobbies. So I said, you know what? I want to come home and I want to find people that share my interests. And it seemed like the best way to do that was Twitch. And then I watched Man vs. Game for the first time and I'm like, I want to try this. So nice. Mm. Uh, sorry, finishing up, fixing everything. Again. Damn it, Minnie. I was fixing it. 
<laughs> it's fixed. Um, so how have you always been streaming on Twitch? Always been streaming on Twitch. Uh, I've done the research on Mixer, especially after the Ninja debacle. I guess I shouldn't uh... call it a debacle, but <laughs> Twitch got kind of a bloody nose when Ninja left. They proved that Twitch is indeed mortal. Mm. Um, so out of curiosity, I went and I compared the retention statistics. Mm. And it looks like on average, one in a thousand people stay for your Mixer stream. While on Twitch, it's about one to two and 100. And if that sounds striking, this is kind of a cornerstone of the content that I make is tracking all these statistics. Mm. It's both good and bad to have an attrition rate that's that high because number one, it's across the board, no matter what your content is, no matter what your demographics are, it's always one to two percent retention. You could be a character streamer, you could have a different time frame, you could have a different game, you could be hype, you could be chill, it doesn't matter, it's two percent across the board. So you don't have to be anybody but yourself on Twitch, which is cool. Cool, yeah. Sorry, I need to catch up on drinking. <laughs> um, yeah, after the stress that you've been Yeah, after what I just woke up to. Um, so, but do you think, so I'm talking about the Twitch thing and the Ninja thing. Twitch, I don't know if you guys know, Twitch has just signed uh, Nick30, who is a YouTuber who I've watched a few of these things. He does a lot of Fortnite as well. So literally they just replaced Ninja with another <laughs> Fortnite goer. Somebody who's not endemic to their own platform, I think, mm -hmm. is the takeaway here. Mm, I've never heard of this person. He seems like Ninja with a personality, and I guess he's built most of his <laughs> fan base on <laughs> having uh, family-friendly content. Okay. So I think I've watched some of his. Well yeah, for. I've watched some of his YouTube's. He is a really nice chap. I I enjoy his content. I think he's a little more like. Don't get me wrong. Ninja is a good player, but he's like watching paint dry. It's just so boring. I'm sorry, Ninja. Like, no offense. I think you're an amazing person. I like the way you treat your community. But I just can't watch you. It's just, it's, it's just, mm. But him, this Nick guy, I enjoy watching him. He's funny. He's communicative. Like, the things he does and says, you know, it's entertaining for me. So, I'm, you know, and I know why Twitch is doing it. They're literally just trying to cover up the Ninja thing, you know, with someone else, you know. But, it seems like an odd way to cover things up, though, too invite somebody from another competing platform mm. who they didn't grow themselves on their own platform to be the new face of Fortnite. Yeah. Otherwise, why spend the money on it, right? So do you think you'll ever move? Is. Would you ever move fully on to um, Mixer? No. <laughs> no. My audience is here and my audience goes back years and years and years. Like, it's just really good friends that I've made that have, you know, been with me through thick and thin. I did not have the easiest start to streaming. There was a lot of trolling oh, yeah. <laughs> of of oh. serious varieties, not not just lighthearted, uh, easy to ban stuff. So they, they stuck with me through that. Like there's history there. Um, I don't know. It's just too ingrained. I'm where my audience is. If they all abandoned it and they were like, we're all going to Mixer. And then I'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll go then. Um, and you don't think they'll move with you? No. Just, just as no, I, I think if you look at Twitch click-through statistics, if you take something like Twitter and you take something like a clip, there's two ways to upload a clip to Twitter, right? One is to rip the clip onto your desktop and then put it on Twitter. And people can just hit the play button, mm. right? So if you upload it from your desktop and just hit play, you can see the video without leaving the platform that you're using. If you just take your link from Twitch Clips and put it up, you can't view it on a phone without leaving Twitter. Yeah. What happens is almost nobody will see your clip. Because they don't so, want to leave. Yep. And all you've done is add one more click to that process. So do I think that somebody's going to leave an entire platform with me? Maybe a few will, but most certainly won't. Cool. So I know a lot of us have a few questions about, because I think we're all, all of us here can say we are trying to work to getting our content out there and, you know, how to deal with trolls, because we've all dealt with that and all that stuff. So uh, let's start with Luna and her questions, and then we'll jump to Lady and then Nero, and then we'll end with my questions. Hmm. So I had a few nasty trolls, when was it? Earlier this week. 
it was probably just one idiot coming in with uh, just just creating new names uh, to you know follow the channel, so the name popped up stream and trying to get him to say it. Uh, they were quite offensive names, and they were quite horrid. Um, how how would you kind of deal with that if someone that just kept coming in with different accounts? To harass you. I mean, you, you can ban every single one, but they're not going to stop. Not because this guy is not stopping. You can turn on followers only mode. I mean, they usually don't follow before you go live. That's mm. one way to stop them and have the followers that have been there. Uh, usually there's a time limit, like 20 minutes. So if they follow for more than 20 minutes and they can interact, uh, you could get your audience involved in on it. You could promote a mod that you trust or promote somebody that's just hanging around and active to just be like, you know what? Ban these guys. But I think the most effective thing to do is write down all of the names and then go to one of the accounts, report the account, but include the other names of the individual that you suspect it is in the mm -hmm. report. And what Twitch will do is they'll check the IPs and the multiple names. Okay. And if they see that the user is creating multiple names, all of them go. All right. So then uh, do you know if Twitch will ban like an IP or just the, the individual name? In that name? case, they will. Okay. But will they get to it? Because, like, Twitch has a lot going on. No. Do they have time? <laughs> there <you> go. No. <laughs> their, their response time is horrible. Um, even for partners, it's not great. Like, what was that thing? Uh, another ninja debacle where they had the porn thumbnail up on his old channel. Oh, yeah. We discussed that last week. Hours. No, we discussed that last week. We think they did that on purpose. Two hours. You think they did that on purpose for a news article? Yeah, yeah, we think that they left that up publicity. there for that long publicity and all that. We, because the thing is, they we've seen them ban within seconds. They left that up on purpose. Could have been availability of who was awake. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I don't think it was good clout for Twitch. Whoever did it, it was either malicious or not thinking ahead. I don't think anybody at the very tippy <laughs> top decided this was a good idea. Because no matter what, at the end of the day, Twitch looked like really very bad for leaving that up as long as they did yeah but they also ruined like legend said they also messed with ninja's name when they did that they made him look great well um, no that was after his else. response that was after his response but a lot of people associate what was happening if they don't know enough about twitch and follow news they will associate that with ninja they don't know that you know how twitch works. like parents they don't know how twitch works That's they don't know true. the drama you know that's true. They so the parents are going to be like, no, kid, you now. cannot watch Ninja. He loves porn. Did you see what he <laughs> snuck in there while all that media hype was happening, though? Mm -mm. So he added his personal number up on social media. Oh, that yeah. That people could call it. And then he started collecting the personal information of all of the nine-year-olds that are subject to listen to something like that. So not exactly a good look, but there were bigger things happening. So he got away with it at the time without most people even noticing. <laughs> mm, wow. Sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, bitchy. Yeah. Luna, any more questions about trolls before we jump to Lady? Or any so other questions? If any other kind of troll that comes in, I know Skull has a very unique way of handling trolls. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> tell us. The kind of troll. Um, it really depends. Are they a dangerous troll? So. There's different levels of troll. There's the easy to deal with troll, like the, the racist, misogynist, the combative viewer that's just trying to get under some other people's skin. Those are easy. Those are just a straight ban. <clears throat> There's the other trolls that play around that might not necessarily cross a line that you're kind of waiting for them to do it. So like, have you guys ever had viewers that show up and they're like, oh my God, you're the most amazing streamer in the world. Yeah. Like yeah. that's the first thing out of their mouth. Like it's so over the top <laughs> that you're suspicious. <laughs> this could be true. And you're just waiting for when a line gets crossed. Those are the ones who keep your eye on it. And those are the ones that are just like, oh, hey, I'm sure nothing horrible is coming in the future. Mm, just letting I've, them know. I've had, I've had a case of people coming in and, you know, you should play this game. This game oh. is really great. Why are you playing that game? You should play this game. And then another random comes in and they're just like competing with each other much. Uh oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> the trolls oh, got no. mad at her and cut her off. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they were like, now you can't play any game. <laughs> it's like, game? What game? Oh my yeah. gosh, lady, what happened? I would say in a situation like that, where they're just like, you should be doing something else. You just you just level with them and you just say, listen, this is the thing that I'm choosing to play today. Mm. You guys want to be here and talk? It's cool. If you guys don't want to be here, there are literally 10,000 other channels or more that you could be on. And I'm sure they would appreciate it. But yeah. if you want to stick around, I'm going to play this. I noticed they also move in packs too. Have you ever noticed like when you're streaming and then one comments and then another comments and, another, and they like, they like a group. They're like fucking hyenas running around trolling and laughing in a really obnoxious yep. way. I'm just like, why? It's like, usually groups of kids on Discord. Yeah, like, they just finished a full Hey, game Bobby, game. what do you want to do today? Cool. I don't know, Dan. That's... Let's go troll. Like, why? It's like my brother. It's like my brother. Honestly, it, like, I love my brother. And he, he is pretty mature until he's with his friends. And then they just go like, we're just going to go troll some random person now. And I'm like sitting there like, you are literally the worst type of person on the internet. Stop so, this. And be like, a couple of things you could do with that, though. If the trolling gets really bad, you could take a screenshot and turn it into Twitter content. That's one of the things that Twitter loves is just calling out horrible behavior. Yeah. Think of it negative or positive. It's sort of. It's weird. It's like Twitter likes watching a train wreck and they love con proof that it's his fault and they're not ours. That's true. It's <laughs> yeah. all right. All streamers experience technical difficulties all the fucking time. All the time. So what we were talking about is how small streamers get more trolls than large streamers. I feel like this is due to the fact that um, the chat is not as um, overcrowded, active. And also, like, I don't know what you guys, I remember one of my first days streaming, I had a guy come in and ask me to show him, you know, my bobs, my Bob Rosses, yeah. and I was like, no, nah. <laughs> and he's like, well, I'm the only viewer here, no one's going to know. I'm like, firstly, it's the internet, there is clipping, everyone will know, and I'll get banned on my first day of Twitch. But I feel like that's why, because they feel like there's no one to protect you when there's little people in the chat. It's an easy yeah. target. It's easy picking for them. That's what I think it is. I don't know if anyone feels different. It's for sure easier to have an impact in a smaller chat that's moving slower mm. because the streamer is forced to react. If your chat is moving fast, you don't have to react to trolls. You just let it scroll past. Yeah. They're just going to have to spam mm -hmm. it more and more. But if the chat is moving fast enough to move the troll's speech, they're either going to have to time it out, ban it, or react to it. The best advice I could give is advice that I got from a book on stand-up comedy. So don't think of trolls in isolation of just Twitch and the internet and streaming. Trolls have existed back to the day of all stage performance. That heckler in the back of the room saying, you suck! And it's how do you react to that? The best advice I've ever gotten is never react to it, but never cross the hurt line. And the hurt yeah. line is that imaginary line where you show that you are pissed off. And you also don't want to hurt them. You don't want to do anything that's so serious that it damages them. Because then the audience is forced to watch. Yeah. So however you respond, don't hurt anybody in the moment. Even if it's despicable behavior. Mm. Mm. My mom always used to tell me they're doing it because they want you to react. So don't Correct. react. That's why I'm like, whenever I've dealt with bullies or people trying, I'm like... You know, sometimes I do get a little, like, witty and sarcastic to them, and I throw a comment that, you know, it's a little, you know, kind of underpunch them. It's just because I'm not in the mood to deal with them. But at the same time, you know, just ignore them. And I know it's hard because especially when you have, like, a slow-moving chat, and then they spam and they don't leave, then, yeah, you just you just kick them. You know, Twitch does have that option. But it's hard not to react sometimes because, like, sometimes, like, when it happens so often... Sometimes you just like, dude, you chose the wrong date across me, and then you kind of just let it rip, you know? They're also betting on the fact that they probably won't be banned because the streamer's probably thinking, this is the only person that's talked within the last half hour. I mm. need the view. I need the view. And God, I know it's hard, but you just don't need those viewers. No, it's not if worth taking it. This, they yeah. need to get out. Yeah, because ha having a troll in your chat is also going to drive away new viewers yep. who will potentially, you know, f follow or come back. Mm -hmm. They won't. Do yeah, you guys I... ever experience any uh, subversive trolling? 
trolling that doesn't look like trolling at first glance? Uh, yeah. Do you ever um, have the over dramatic people come in? Yeah. Every day is a new crisis. Like my <laughs> my my grandma died yesterday, and today my grandpa fell down the stairs. Have a thing. My other grandpa yeah. also fell down the stairs. They were together. And yeah. <laughs> I feel no, bad though, because um, I never I know, know if it's fake though, because then I and then I answer sincerity, and then people are like they're trolling. I'm like, yeah, but you never know. Maybe it's true. Or there's someone in chat that's experienced this. I want to, want to help. <laughs> yep. Best way to deal with it though is a canned response, even though it's a little bit impersonal. It's that sucks. I'm sorry you had to go through that. I'm here to take your mind off of it, and you can go back to commentating the game. You acknowledge that you have empathy for it, but you move forward. Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're not there to be somebody's shoulder to cry on, per se. You are there to put on a show and entertain. Mm -hmm. or, or it's like, it's my birthday today. And I'm like, happy birthday. Seven other people in chat. It's also my birthday today. It's also my birthday today. It's like, cool. I'm I'm glad that you you chose to share this day with me. Yep, I had, this is I normal had, stuff. <laughs> yeah, I had someone it's come like, to my yeah. chat day and was like hey it's my brother's birthday can you say happy birthday to my brother so i'm like okay happy birthday to your brother and then the little mistake is like it's my brother's birthday can you sing him happy birthday i'm like no <laughs> no fuck up <laughs> have you guys had the why was i banned person oh yeah <laughs> in dms the message like hey why was i did that i'm like i don't know the fuck you are what are you talking about <laughs> or, or it's the same guy they're like why was i banned I'm pretty sure it's for that thing that you said you just before we timed you out for 30 minutes. <laughs> I won't lie though, I've had one troll become one of my best viewers because oh, yeah. of the way I responded yeah. to them. Like they came in, they purposely trolled and I, I, you know, I joked off with them about it and then they're like, you know what, you're pretty cool, I'm just going to stick around here. I'm like, go for it. <laughs> I have a mod that used to do that. <laughs> right? It's weird, like when the trolls become the best out of the stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like Abby. Yeah, it does depend on the troll. Abby. Oh, Abby. Uh, but yeah, I had one troll where they, they like, requested a song, like, from, ah, from that pink guy, I think, or something like that. And it was, like, this really stupid song, like, I hate your face and whatnot. And I was like, oh, this reminds me of my brother. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they were like, this is not what we intended at all. And I'm like... <laughs> Yeah. Would you too oblivious? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, it's like I'm pretty sure my brother played the song for me. Oh, I miss my brother now. And they were like, what? No, no, no. And I was like, someone else was like, oh, I don't like the song. I was like, okay, I'll skip it. Skip, you know. So, well, they come in. I had I had this one guy who would come in and tell jokes, but they would be like adult jokes, and you know. You see, he, he started saying one joke and then obviously everybody laughed and then everybody else just, just you know, said worse jokes and we all laughed about it and they left. <laughs> no, like, this is not going the way I hoped it would. It's like, well, welcome to my channel. Here we do make jokes like that. So, uh, <laughs> it's not really yeah, yeah. going to have yeah, any effect. Yeah, being, being cognizant of the tone of your channel is another thing. That's... Mm -hmm very very complex but what you allow to talk about like i run a pretty adult channel lots of swearing i habitually give people the finger yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other day i had two uh two viewers that were talking about their favorite kind of dildo and i was like um i think that's a little bit over the line yeah <laughs> like adult conversation cool full on this is how we get off conversation not nah, cool. Not cool. <laughs> let's, let's maintain some kind of semblance of. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a line. <laughs> it's a thin line, but it's there. Mm -hmm. just, don't cross it. Okay, so yeah. what's the uh, worst troll you've ever had? Like one that like what like was stuck in your mind. Uh, this one popped up today, actually, and it's Ooh. a troll that happened three years ago. It's a guy that I started streaming with. Then ended up spreading rumors that I was taking work of his. <laughs> and I'm Excuse like, me? number one, I could design all of my own shit. Number two, I met this dude in real life. And he ended up staying for room and board for PAX East. After that is when I found about the rumors. 
So he popped up again with a new phone number today. And he goes, hey, it's this person. I'm like, delete, block, (laughs) fuck off. (laughs) That's the worst troll I've ever had. But that's the beginning of, I alluded before to saying I didn't have the easiest journey starting up. Mm. And it's why I feel so strongly that people protect themselves properly against trolls and notice different types of serious behavior. Because Mm. trolls are not always easy to deal with and then you don't always notice them when you find people that are habitually oversharing not a good thing and if you allow it in your channel and you allow a habitual over channel yeah habitual oversharing in your channel over a long period of time and it becomes i don't want to say like a support group but it becomes very touchy and feely that is like the greatest bait for somebody that's a sociopath that wants to take advantage of people mm. i have heard horror stories about people faking the identities I've heard horror stories about people faking their deaths. Just people having romantic online relationships. And then this person finding out that that person they were in a romantic relationship with didn't exist after like a year. This is all real shit. That that, that taps into like the other other topic. topic. Yeah, Yeah. at the end. Yeah, so we have to hold on to that. There's, yeah, there's, there's, I've got stories for that, but yeah, we'll save that. So we'll it. <laughs> um, jumping off onto the troll thing, have you heard of the, it this happened a few months ago, but the pro Jared incident, Skull, are you? No. Oh yeah. So none heard of heard you guys, that. come on ladies. <laughs> so the name sounds familiar. Jog so memory. pro Jared, uh, he's, um, a YouTuber. I think it was YouTube that he was on. I'm not sure. But he has this thing. Firstly, okay, I find this super weird. But I get, you know, my thing is people do what they do. If they like it, let them. But so at the time he was married and he had this thing with his viewers that they were allowed to send provocative, let me just be blatant, fucking dick pics, boot pics, butt pics to him. Okay. And his wife was okay with it, you know. I thought it was super weird. Like I even asked my husband, like, what would you do if I allow my viewers to send nude pictures to me? And yeah, I'm like, no. I just, it sounds weird to me, you know, it's just and too personal. Um, didn't he send some back? Um, I think he might have. I'm not too sure, but um, I can't confirm or deny that because I, obviously yeah. I don't want to say anything. But what happened was whenever he did this, he always said, are you over 18? Are you comfortable with saying, like he made sure he covered it well, you know? And then a couple of months ago, two people, both named Charlie, had accused him of forcing them to send pictures to him and they were under the age of 18 and basically from these accusations he lost contracts he had to resign from positions his whole career took a huge plummet because of this and he was quiet about it he didn't say anything so it didn't help you know a lot of people like oh he's not responding you know and recently on the 27th of august he finally posted a video about the topic where he provided proof that he did ask them, that he had proof that they were clearly not, he didn't ever say they're lying. It's like, what do you think? They have this going on. I have this proof. They have not applied proof, you know? That's what I thought. But his whole video, I took my hat off to him. He did it really well. He took three months to talk to legal lawyers, you know, make sure whatever he says in his video will not bite him back. And I just felt bad for him because I'm like, because of these two trolls, these two people, you lost nearly everything hmm. from these accusations because he allowed such a personal thing between him and his viewers. Hmm. He kind of left the door open by allowing not I agree. such a personal thing, but easily misconstrued the thing. It only <laughs> took a little nudge to nudge the story in a way where people believed this could have happened. But that's a lot mm-hmm. of things when it comes to, I feel like nowadays, every time someone, it's the first person to pull the trigger, they will believe. As soon as you pull the trigger, people are like on your side. Um, even after he showed evidence and all that stuff, he still has people not believing him. It's called the primacy effect. It's a psychological effect where the first thing somebody tells you about somebody, you tend to believe. Believe, yeah, because it's stuck in your mind. It's, the first, it's like that kind of idea that, like, first impression. It's like what's stuck. That's what you remember, you know. Um, his wife also exposed it, but no offense, his wife lied. 
she even came out and said i was wrong about what i said like he like he took a lot of shots and like um there was even the thing that he cheated on his wife with this girl holly and holly cheated on her guy but like it is that's just the other one my point was that he allowed for what he was doing i get what he was doing he wanted he said he did it because he wanted his viewers to feel comfortable with him and all that i personally would never do that because (laughs) it's weird in my books (laughs) Yeah, it's I've never felt compelled weird. to be like, hey. I, I find it really weird. Please, if guys, <laughs> never send me any new pictures. Me. I don't want <laughs> them. Send me nudes? No. No. I want you to no. feel comfortable. No. 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 Right, yeah. I want you to feel comfortable in my chat. Send me a dead pic. No, I don't want that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like... That and just like... <laughs> put it on, on like, there. But him allowing for that, he kind of destroyed the line between him and his viewers and I, and the thing is i feel like as streamers as content creators there is a power thing we do hold power over a lot of our viewers even so though it's not a big one yeah we are influencers even though we're small we still have some sort of control on some people like i have some mm-hmm. viewers that have been with me for the whole year i've been streaming and if i say something or suggest something they like they're down for it and i'm like don't take everything i say seriously like, I hate that. Or oh, when they come to me, like, I always tell my viewers, like, I'm there for you if you need to talk, but I can't be there to solve your problems. I yeah. can, you cannot rely on me. And a lot of my viewers, it got to the point where I did have a viewer who I, I it actually became a huge issue where I was there for them whenever they wanted and they got really mad at me when I wasn't there for them because I was going through my own stuff. I wasn't answering me. Uh, I never give my number, but like Discord calls, they will message me. I wouldn't respond enough. And it became really, really bad. And I had to tell them. And it was the hardest thing. You guys know me. The hardest thing I ever had to tell them was, I cannot be there for you anymore. You are now, instead of me being someone to talk to and just to, like, ease off to, you rely on me to be your crutch. I have told you multiple times to go find a professional. I did a semester of psychology. That is not professional. And also, I'm here to entertain. I'm here for my passion. I cannot be there to be your psychologist. I cannot be there to be your friend. I cannot be there to be your mother. I cannot be that person for you. I can just be that pillow talk moment. That's it. And at that point, Mm -hmm. I realized there was a line and I allowed that line to become non-existent and I regretted it. And it was hard for me to realize that I had to learn that lesson. And I feel with pro Jared, he had to learn the hard way too. He, there was a solid line and he allowed it to disappear. I think everybody's instinct is to help everybody around them. And yeah. I think learning where to draw a line and how to enforce that line and stand up for yourself and your own personal boundaries is something you have to learn sooner yeah. rather than later. Because imagine if this happened like years from now and, you know, more people around, more clout. Yeah. Like with Pro Jared, just... he lost a lot because of that. Yeah, exactly. And he's been doing it for years. I think the accusations were from 2016. Wow. Wow. So three years, you know. (sighs) But do you, you, back to the troll thing, is do you you guys think that as, uh, do you think that females will get more trolls than the the male? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Why would you say that, Luna? I'm playing high (laughs) race. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's not that's not a question that's just like that's just normal facts that's yeah. the state of twitch like what 85 percent of twitch is male <laughs> of the ages 17 to 25 mm. so trolls also have a did you ever sit down and think what makes a troll like what allows trolling to happen who goes trolling so i have, I have a theory of a troll has to have time available to them, number one, which usually mm-hmm. means people with time available to them, usually kids. Adults usually have responsibilities, dreams, goals, things to work on. Usually. Kids, not so much. Yes, usually. There's still adult <laughs> trolls for sure. But it also has to be somebody that's seeking any kind of attention, somebody that can't get positive attention, so they go seeking Negative. negative attention because it's better than none yeah it's better than the isolation of being by themselves so it's somebody that's probably lonely has a lot of free time and probably somebody that doesn't mind getting negative attention because they don't see attention from anybody else 
Um, I think when dealing with trolls, it's important to probably remember that fact, especially the different kind of trolls. Yeah. It's kind of yes. like with kids, though. Like, it's just a general mentality that kids have. You know, when parents don't give them attention or anything, they they lash out. They become they aggressive out. or they act out because they want something. And when you and it happens to adults, you know, sometimes an adult is just bored. They have nothing else to do. They feel lonely or thing. And so take that and add those demographics into that. Take yeah, eighty-five percent is male, of a young age. Mm -hmm. And then say, where are they probably going to go to troll? They're going to go find those girl streamers at the bottom of the viewer list who have no one guarding them, who, you know, uh, and it's not easy being a streamer, especially when you have a camera on. It is really hard. I struggled with it, putting myself, I've never been one to just put myself out there. And it took me a while to put a camera on because when me putting it out there is asking and it's sad to say this it shouldn't be this but this is society i am asking to be insulted about my looks i am asking to be questioned about everything about who like what i look like though that is not true i'm not asking it i'm just putting i'm just you know building a bond between me and my viewers more personal but in society that's what people think you know, you put yeah, yourself we're out there. Yeah, subjecting to the judgment of other we're people. We're subjecting, and it's wrong. But that is what Twitch is. So when they see a girl streamer with no viewers, they're like, "Oh, I know where I can go put my boredom." Yeah, I remember. Like, I think it's when I just started streaming within that first week. I was streaming. What was it? Guild Wars Two, <laughs> and um, I had. I had no one. It was dead. And I had this, this, this one person come in. He's like, oh, hi, hello. I'm like, hi, you know, welcome to the channel. And he goes, and he goes uh, thanks for responding. Is this the, the general fact channel? I'm like, excuse me? And then his friend came in and started with that. I actually just turned the stream off. I'm so upset. Mm. I mean, that was the first time I experienced that. And it, it hit me hard. And I was like, okay, that's it. And I just, I just turned, turned the stream off. And I didn't stream again for quite a while mm. have you grown accustomed to more dumb shit like that the longer that you stream yeah and now i just ignore them and ban them immediately yep. I, I don't even respond i don't give them the satisfaction anymore mm. i just show them no emotion so how long would you go before you like actually realize, oh, this is actually a troll. I should probably ban them. Ban them Depends immediately. Depends on what they say. Or... Yeah. Are they trying to cross a hurt line with me or one of my other viewers? Are they trying to mm -hmm. hurt? If they're trying to hurt, get rid of them. Gone. Done. No more thinking. No deliberation. No ban that's temporary. No appeal. No timeout. Just gone. <laughs> Just bam. Cut off. I, because I've I had tolerance for people that are malicious. Yeah. So I had a I had a person come into my stream, uh, being quite like, "So I see you're from South Africa." And I'm like, "Oh, Here this can only go south." There we go. <laughs> uh, and this person's like, "So, so what do you think of the political system?" I'm like, "I don't want to talk about politics." Simple. And he's like, "Yeah, but Good policy." What, what 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 do you want what do you think about this i'm like dude chill i just told you and then he like kept going on and on and on and then eventually he he kind of just like ended off with like i hate all white people from south africa and like left and then instant ban it's like okay that that's that's a thing so yeah i think he might have so. exhibited a red flag before it got really bad which is yeah. his refusal to listen to your suggestion not to do something yeah yeah yeah, no, definitely. So I, I feel like I should have banned, or like my mod should have banned him earlier. But my mod was like, no, I just want to mess with this guy. That I was like, okay, whatever, it's fine. I, I'm fine with it. It was just like, that was the first bad, really, really bad experience that I've had with a troll. So I, I don't know. I feel like I should have maybe banned him earlier. And I'm just like, you know, asking for the advice for everyone out there, maybe who has a similar experience like you know this guy's not doing really something really bad and then at the end he just like gets like super super yeah um, 
Some, some of them I, are sneaky. They like to come in and get your trust first. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then drop it. Yeah. Long I had a troll. case of... It's, it wasn't necessarily on Twitch, but it was while I was streaming. Uh, myself and Machine used to play Battlefield for my husband uh, competitively, like a few years ago. So we like decided, like, hey, let's pick up BU4. And we were playing on a local server, and then a friend of ours was also playing on the server. And then I told him, hey, we're streaming, you know, like in the chat because he was on the enemy team. But it wasn't for me to tell everybody that hey i'm streaming come watch me i just like told him like hey dude we're streaming like come join us because you can't message somebody on the enemy team you can't dm them mm. if they're not in your squad so what i actually did there which was wrong <laughs> i opened up myself for trolls so this guy on he was on my team he opened up our stream and he started making racial remarks towards me in the chat of the game. Um, eventually, we made a clip and then we posted it on the Battlefield group. But this guy downright started insulting me because of my race. And it kind of triggered me a bit. But the way that I deal with trolls and people that intentionally try to hurt you is that I try to mock them. Mm. So they'll tell me like oh you're colored and then like oh wait just wait like one second lady lady one second, lady, lady, one second. Yeah. so guys in south africa colored is uh, a race in our culture it's not us you know i know that in america it's just because in america it has a different term like so in south africa we have the whites blacks and colors it's not like in the american version sorry i just had to clarify because terms of service continue so <laughs> So he'll say some derogatory term, you know, to try and make me feel shit about who I am. And I'm like, oh, you're trying to be funny. That's nice. And I'll, I'll just be sarcastic with him. But in the end, when somebody tries to bring me down, it actually pisses me off. Mm. Because of all the things that could possibly be wrong with me, you're trying to trigger me because I'm a different skin color and then some other people in the B4 group in the battlefield group said that this guy is an issue is very very racist but with something like that I think that I might have dealt with it in an okay way but I also got attacked in the clip that I made because I'm quite vulgar in my streams and I swear a lot and I said that I said camping faggot because the guys were camping and then I got attacked for saying the word faggot mm -hmm. and everyone else ignored the fact that this guy was racist towards me yeah. and then it just became a everyone's attacking me because I said the word faggot I mean really <laughs> Yeah, it's... They, yeah, they they called me and they called me a homophobe because I said faggot, but everyone else ignored the fact that I was being attacked in the chat of a game where I wasn't actually inviting the guy over because he was watching the stream because everything that I said in the stream he said in the chat of the game on the server. Unfortunately, that's just one of the the no no things to say. I know a guy that just got a thirty day ban for that, and he wasn't saying it at a specific person in a one-on-one -on -one situation and it couldn't it, it was a situation where it could have also been construed as like a cigarette as well yeah still got the 30-day ban still had the no contact from twitch um at the end of the day how did you feel when you interacted with this troll even though you said you handled it the right way after all was said and done was it positive or negative that it was allowed to continue i think is the takeaway right yeah <sighs> Look, I was very upset. Um, I try not to take things personally because at the end of the day, that guy was just looking for a reaction out of me, mm -hmm. which I think he might not have gotten the reaction that he wanted because I, I didn't want to show emotion. I didn't want to show him that he was triggering me. So I just thought, tried to deal with it by being sarcastic, which I tend to be from time to time with a lot of people. And... My husband is actually more upset about everything because he's the one that went on to Facebook and then 
made a clip of what happened and you know showed people like is this the kind of behavior of like the battlefield community like what do you guys you know what are you going to do about it and then people's like oh there's, unfortunately there's nothing you can do about someone like this guy's a troll he's racist everyone knows about it and people just let it slide i mean like okay there is nothing you can do about it the the best you can do is maybe ban him from the server but then you'll have to get the server admin involved but i mean it's just it's not cool for people to do shit like that it, it could have been someone else that it's much more sensitive to when oh, they have easy. racial so so remarks thrown at them they could have been much more hurt hey, about that mm. but it's it's really difficult when people try and get to you because of you i think when it comes to race and religion i think that is two things that people just don't like talking about or mentioning because race religion just, politics and sexual it's just preference. too personal yeah. it's too mm-hmm. personal that's a big no no like my, my stepdad my stepdad he, he 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 just wants the best for all of us he he said don't say anything that could be held against you mm, so yeah. race politics religion just big no no's just don't go there you don't well, now it's also gender point, and uh, gender pronouns, and... you know, it's it's harder oh, nowadays, I won't lie, to be careful, yeah. but my um, mom- I'm gonna take an unpopular stance on the gender pronoun thing. I think gender pronouns are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> because me for 32 too. years, my first name has been Carrie. And I survived for 32 years. <laughs> People not being sure what gender I was without seeing you're talking to me. I think people will be okay. Um, of course, they're licensed to be comfortable with whatever gender pronoun I choose, but I think people get really like up in arms and really offended for very little reason. But that's just like mm-hmm. nowadays, like people will find anything to, yeah. like, I don't know if it's because everyone's just soft skinned or everything, everyone wants to be offended by saying, oh, because we live in a world where you can sue anyone for anything. Like people are suing <laughs> Red Bull right now because their drink did not give them wings. That is the world <laughs> we live in. I'm not joking. So uh, I think people use it to get social media clout too, as they see remember before when we were talking about using a troll as content Mm. that's the dark side Mm. of it is that any perceived offense on you can be used to gain social media clout so i think that's where it blows up and i think that's where all that offense gets steam yeah Hmm. oh trolls how we love you okay here's a general question what is the worst trolled game you've ever played like, what game do you guys play that you get the most trolls or comments from? Overwatch. Overwatch? Siege. Siege? <laughs> Nero? Well, Overwatch or Dark Souls? Really? You get a lot from Dark Souls? <laughs> yes. Dark Souls has Actually, a very healthy yeah. troll community. <laughs> no matter what the you other, do in it. <laughs> the other day I was streaming Dark Souls for that charity stream and the, the internet kind of cut off. But, like... Just before someone comes into the ta- chat, like, you're such a thought. And I'm sitting there, like, excuse Thanks. me. Thanks. What? <laughs> no, no. You know what? First I, of all, actually, use it I was like, correctly. Please. No, no. I was like, I was like, oh, hello, person. And then I like, carry on. And then I was like, wait, that's actually kind of a rude way to greet to me. <laughs> because, yeah. No, but my friends, my friends are actually, my friends are trolls. So I'm so used to pe- they're, them calling them like, like my my Overwatch friend, he's like, you thought, want to come um play Overwatch? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like that's how we like, and I call him you bitch, and we we just like that's how we communicate. So I'm like so used to when it's some some person calls me thought, and I'm like, there's a random person that's like hi, th-, you know, or like you're such a thought or something like that. And I was like hello, and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm not supposed to be that happy about that. <laughs> 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 Mine is Counter Strike. Counter Strike. Uh, Mine is Counter Strike. I heard Counter Strike was uh, very, very anti-female. Heavy, uh... Oh wait, sorry, what? Yeah, is that... <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, that too, but very heavy with like 
the bad sportsmanship. So. Yeah, especially when you have a team and there's one person trolling. Because I think that's the worst kind of troll in CSGO is that you have that person in your team who's trying to, like, downgrade their rank or they're just there to, you know, call shit. Like, ugh. But no, I there's a reason I don't talk in CSGO. Because as soon as I say, hey, guys, let's go B. Oh, my God. It's an IRL girl. Wonder why she sucks. Her boobs are in the way. Huh? I'm pretty sure your boobs are bigger than me, you fat so sitting at home with your mom <laughs> down below. Like, what the hell? <laughs> no, but like, it's, yeah. I feel like, um, but you can't do much about it in CSGO. Like, I feel like when you report those things, like, I never heard anyone being banned for abusive talk to me in CSGO. Well, you got to think about reporting teams. They're probably like, who, who would get paid to go sift through these thousands of reports that they get per day? I would yes. gladly. Yes. I will take on that job. I will be like. <laughs> oh, I've yes. learned more about this. They tried to do this with League of Legends. Oh god, no! I, I would never play it all. That's asking for trouble. At one the arbitration stage. system in League, the tribunal. <laughs> mm. It doesn't work. Um, they let other players review the reports of other players, and if a certain number of the tribunal that reviews it votes a certain way, then the punishment is levied. What really happens is everybody just votes it negative and everyone gets punished <laughs> because it's faster. And I think they attached like a, uh, an RP or like an in-game currency bonus for doing this review for them. So they tried to outsource it. People game the system and then it blew up in their face. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, no. Um, with, with Overwatch, like, I mean, there was this one clip circling around where this guy is like... So there was like two girls in the chat. The one was keeping quiet. The other one was playing a damaged character. And then this guy was like, can the girl please do more damage? I saw that on Twitter. And you sit there like... Fuck wood. Honestly. That it's was... disgusting. It was disgusting. And it's like, yeah, so, chills, chills. At one stage, Siege, I don't know what Ubisoft was doing, but I think it was for like a few days where in the feed, uh, Siege has a thing with the feed when they ban somebody, it shows globally. It doesn't matter whether the person's actually in the game or not. It just, it shows this person's been banned. And at one stage, they just went fucking bonkers. This one was banned for toxic behavior. That one was banned. And I promise you, it probably went on for like the couple of hours that I was playing the game. So they are actually banning people for toxic behavior. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're broadcasting it globally as a proof that they're doing something. Yeah, yeah. which I'm but glad. And there's an update now with the new season where they're actually reporting the toxic behavior button from... Uh, reporting somebody for cheating or hacking and or reporting them for negative behavior they just change the wording because at the moment you can't actually report somebody for cheating it's just report person for toxic behavior mm. so it's it's an improvement in the game they are improving but i mean it's 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 something that all games should have you should legitimately be able to ban somebody because they're being toxic I agree mm. I think unfortunately a lot of games tie their hands though um, any game that's free to play usually has a high degree of toxicity. League of Legends, Fortnite, Dota, Roblox, CSO. Yeah, and you guys want to meet some rude <laughs> trolls, go play Fortnite with those nine-year-old squeakers. Woof! <laughs> Gets heated. Actually, the nine-year-olds are okay. I, I have an anecdotal story about that. I did a Fortnite. I hate on Fortnite all the time. <laughs> Who doesn't? I have a problem with the game. But, like, it's just in my face all the time and I'm just not interested and I wish it would go away. <laughs> but as a joke one night, I did a stream, played Fortnite, and I role played the devil. And I role played the devil pretty good. <laughs> so I talked to every player that I randomly got queued with as the devil, and we, we just played it out. The little kids were cool. They thought it was funny, and they were really into it, and they were like sharing stuff. They were neat. But the teenagers, I wanted to drop kick through a bay window. <laughs> Because they would just be like, using a voice changer, dude. I'm like, no, nah, I'm really the devil. <laughs> Use a voice changer, whatever. They just couldn't get past the fact that the voice. No imagination. Voice none, none. They wouldn't play along with it. They were just like, whatever you bought. Oh, uh, God. You're going to sit right here. <laughs> <laughs> In 
my hell because I'm the devil. <laughs> oh, so, I watched that. That was Jack got a kick out of it. That was that was a really funny one, and you you had that little that that little kid that you were playing with, and he was running around with you. That was mm -hmm. so good. yeah. He was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he was cool. It's the teenagers. I don't know where they learn like at high it's because they're at that mean. age where they think they know it. Like I've played a lot of CS:GO, and I know when I play the difference when I play like with those like ball dropping teenagers and like adult like older people. Because the thing is, like I know at first you can hear it in their voice, their age. <laughs> But the amount of times that I play with these like kids who are between like the ages of 12 and 15 and they decide that they have to mansplain a game to me that I've been playing for months is hilarious. Mm. Especially when they're bottom frag and I'm top frag. Like I'll be top frag and I'll do one bad thing. Just one bad thing. You know, you should really stop doing that. You should do it that way. And I'm like, dude, stop talking, please. It's like killing me. And also, I'll just shine them on at the end of the game. I'd be like, when, don't worry. When your balls drop, your KDA will improve. <laughs> I'm going to use that next time. But eh, God, it's like the man's, it's like the age of mansplaining where they have to like mansplain things to you. They have to, they know they're better than you, that you're doing anything wrong. Well, the thing is like, that's what I hate as, I don't know if it's just general, but as soon as you do one thing wrong, the small, you could be doing the most perfect game ever, like perfect. And you do one thing wrong and you lose the clutch. So you're the shittest player funny, out man. there. <laughs> Games with spectating systems tend to have a lot of toxicity. Whenever you die in League, you're given the ability to do nothing but spectate the rest of your team during the time you're dead. So naturally, you go watch your, your teammate play and probably take issue with something stupid that happened or something that's not quite perfect that they're doing. And you have nothing but free time to talk about it in chat. Yeah. Games that don't have spectating systems, I would argue, have less toxicity. <laughs> Because they can be called. But then say his girl has spectating. <laughs> uh, okay, so we had one of our viewers like way past in the chat because we were talking about trolls so much. Uh, they asked about how you got. Because Skull is a part of the stream on Twitch and they just want to know what did you do to get there? Like, what was your process? I have a whole website <laughs> that discusses the process. Already? Um, but I'm Post just going to tell yeah, I even put up guides um, with actual useful information, not fluff. But it's wow. a lot of it was game picking, number one. High quality was number two. I don't think high quality actually had an impact on follower rate. I think if your audio and video are acceptable, then you're good. Hmm. I think the game you play, and especially if you're just limited to Twitch, the game mm. you play is definitely contributory to how many people will meet you. Um. I could go talk about this literally for eight hours, but the too long didn't read is the people at the top of the directory see probably 90% of the new follower traffic and the rest of the next 10% is split around the five people that are in the second row. And I will tell you that, that I've been doing statistical studies on this for the past few months. One of the methods that I recommend is assembling what's called the greatest of all time list of games. And what you do is you go back to each console, you look at the top 20 selling games, and what you're looking for is a game that has a big following. So like if you go back to PlayStation 1, you'll find games like Final Fantasy 7, you'll find Metal Gear, you'll find, you know, legendary things that you've played years and years and years ago. Start with those because they have no supply on Twitch, but by using the sales figures, you can pretty much estimate that they have high demand. So you're just trying to find a mismatch between supply and demand when you first start. Um, if you're really married to one game, like you really only want to play Fortnite or Apex, then you have to spend most of your time networking because mm. people aren't just going to navigate 70 pages down to the zero to five section of Fortnite and find you. So that's one start to that way, but the rest of it's on the website. That's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> How long until you got partnered? Uh, three months after going full-time. Oh, wow. But so are you full-time right now? Yeah. But I've only been streaming. I was streaming like two, I think it was two years before that. And then I saved up enough expenses 
where if I made not a dime from streaming for three years, that I would still be able to live. Oh, wow. And then I went full time. So I told you I was an accountant before and I worked in Fortune 100. That's my advantage before going that. into this. Cool. Every streamer has an advantage. You just have to figure out what it is. You can't give somebody like a blanket statement. This is a good time to go full time because everybody's situation is different. So mm. I like I have Lady Skull. I'm allowed health insurance through Lady Skull. <laughs> That's a big deal. Like somebody on their own, somebody that didn't have that advantage would probably have to account for that advantage. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Do you think it's harder to get partnered now though because the platform is so saturated? Because I know some people who start when Twitch started and they got partnered so much quicker just because it, there wasn't a lot of people to compete with, you know? Saturation is the reason that I recommend game choice being your primary focus when you first start. The other thing that I also recommend is making content off of Twitch because Twitch does a really crappy job of making you searchable. You can't search Twitch and find a specific streamer of a specific type. What has been happening lately is more people have been making YouTubes, Instagram content, and website content that lets them be searchable on the largest search platforms in the world. Yeah. YouTube, Google. Yeah. Oh, I agree, Jovic. Skull is cheating because he's got the fucking voice. Him and Sid Alpha uh, voice actually cheats. isn't contributory. <laughs> That's bullshit. Honestly, when, Luna, oh when Luna sent no. me to your stream, I was like... Oh my god. <laughs> Keep talking. Like, the there. ladies were like, Minnie! And I'm like, I can't help <laughs> it. I'm mesmerized. <laughs> I have a high percentage of female viewership, which is cool, which is weird. On Wonder Twitch. why? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's the voice. It's the Getting voice. Getting them there is the harder part. Converting them to a follower, which is actually an article that I'm writing after this. Um, converting them to a follower, I have no worries about. Mm. Getting them in the door is where people get hung up. That's the hardest thing, and people don't separate it. They're just like, if I'm really entertaining and really high quality, then people will show up. The trigger for that happening is people have to talk about you. Your quality and your content has to be so different that people are like, yo, you gotta come check this out. And I have high quality audio, video, knickknacks, do all my own visual stuff. That's not what brings people in because it's not so different that people are talking about it. They're like, it's cool, but like, do you guys ever watch like Sushi Dragon? Uh, yeah, I've seen him. That's like yeah. being on drugs. Like you go watch and you're like, so he's, he's, he's completely like crazy. He exceeds that threshold where people have to talk about it and get their friends in there because it is so unique. And that's the example and that's the difference. But even for somebody that has high quality, like myself, I still have to think of how do I get people in the door and how do I get my name out there? How do I get people to know I exist? Mm -hmm. So if you're a small streamer, start thinking about that sooner rather than later. And definitely consider your position in the directory you're streaming in because, like I said, 90% of the attention, and I'm not estimating that 90%, by the way, that's statistical, statistically what I've uncovered over the past few months using Selenome. 90% of the new follower attention goes to the top of the directory in the first four slots. So, Don't stream Fortnite. Take that information, <laughs> do with it what you will. <sighs> Actually, Fortnite and Minecraft have weird things where they'll recommend random streamers. Mm. So, Fortnite and Minecraft actually tend to have really high follower counts, so it feels really good. But you're still not at the top of the directory, so no. all the new followers are still going up there. I yeah. found that um, I got a big following when I played Dark Souls and Skyrim. Those two Those games are still brought good in the most people. Games too. Yeah. See, I just I can't do that. Like when I come to streaming, and I know this is my biggest like failure when I come streaming, is that I don't stream games that I know will get me followers. I stream games that I love and I want to play. And I know that if I had focused on getting into big games early, like Destiny Two or saying early enough, I maybe would have boosted way better. When I played Destiny Two, um, when I used to play Out of War, and I used to be the top uh in America for it, I used to have a ton of followers for it. But I, and viewers, I used to like get 30 views for it but then after a while i was like i can't play anymore i need to try something else and i lost a lot of viewers for that but at the same time it made me more happy you know i don't yeah. want to be stuck like ninja having to play the same game over and over and so over again. actual numbers switching games usually cost you 50 percent of your audience mm. flat um 
Number two, I could hear that a lot. <laughs> like all the time and every time I mention this. Um, the processes I recommend are actually making your own list. So when I was talking about that greatest of all time, it was a process of making a list. And what you would do is you pick off the games that you like from the list. And you mm. have at the end of the list, 20 or 30 games. And like, if you can't find a game to play that you really like in 20 or 30 games, I can't help you from that perspective. <laughs> <laughs> but I can teach you how to run Twitch analytics to potentially find some new stuff that's in a right place that you also might like. I never recommend playing something that you would hate or find boring. It's a mix between the two. Because part of you has to like meeting new people mm. and be focused on meeting new people. And then the other part is enjoying the game and making additional content on top of the game. Yeah. I think uh, consistency would also be a good point. Big there. factor. Because you want your viewers to know where to find you, yeah. when to find you, what to find you on. Like, that is my biggest thing, too. I am not consistent. more than that, too. Mm. Like, it's it's not even just schedule. It's, it's scheduled game selection. Tone is, is hugely important. Um, do you ever go to like a chill stream and you're like, I'm going to fall asleep to this stream. <laughs> and then at four in the morning, somebody's like, Oh my God, I just got a pen and kill. You're like I'm never sleeping to this stream ever. Again. <laughs> tone is huge. The shifts in tone is a, another reason streamers get hung up. I do that a lot too. <laughs> Uh, if anyone in chat has no, if anyone in chat has personal question, not personal, sorry, has any personal question, question? <laughs> yeah, like Brad says, yeah. Uh, does anyone have questions uh, for Skull about um, his streaming and any questions on how to get bigger? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and how to get to, like prove his Twitch, your Twitch or anything, all that stuff. <laughs> Go for it. Sorry, I'm choosing the worst words today. Um, <laughs> when you became partner, did you find out that, like, did you feel like getting that tick improved your stream in terms of viewership? Like, people were more kind to come watch you because you were partnered? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what happens in the vast majority of cases, uh, and I did something after I got partnered, which is also insanely stupid that I highly recommend you don't do. We'll talk about that. When you get partnered, it's the achievement of a big goal that everybody wants to get behind you. Like the path to partner is, you know, something that Twitch instituted themselves. People turned into a media thing and people want to help other people achieve it. They're like, yeah, it's going to get partnered. And then something's going to happen. It's going to blow up even bigger, right? There's this big perception that everything will get better and all the problems will be solved after partner. Fucking no. <laughs> no, no, nothing changes. Um, you get the tick mark, but like. That's it. What? Nothing else happens. You get additional emotes, which you should hype up. You should be like, we have our new emotes designed, and this is cool. Here you go. Next week, four more emotes. Next week after that, four more emotes. Next week after that, four more emotes. And then uh, after that, you, there's no real roadmap. You're still small enough where people don't necessarily want to work with you yet, like sponsors and stuff. Mm. So no promotion there, unless you already have something in place. You're still small enough where Twitch isn't prioritizing your queue because there's 17,000 active partners and 35,000 total partners. When yep. you just get partnered, you're on the bottom of that list. So it's like you start, so you'll be the top of affiliates, and then when you become partner, you bottom of partners. It's like a rank yeah. up you have to go again. Interesting. Exactly. Um, depending on your country, they will assign you a uh, partner representative. So actually in South Africa, you guys might be good. I don't know. Not sure. I don't know any South African partners, actually. Uh, Google and uh, Jay, right? And uh, probably have. Who's that other rest. girl? No, it's the Jay. Wolfie. The Wolfie. Oh, I love him. He's another voice I like. Uh, Lady Jay. No, who's that other girl? Um, she. Um, oh, thinking um, of Yoey Bear. She yeah. lost the partnership. Do we... Really? Why? I don't know. I don't know the drama behind it. I don't okay. follow her anymore, but she doesn't have the purple deck anymore. And I Interesting. Don't know. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. want to talk about it because oh, I no, don't that's know. Fine. I and she then there was Oreo. I heard that happening, actually. And there was... I'm also interested. Yeah, I want to know, too. <laughs> um, so, Hailstorm has asked, is a schedule a must? Depends on how you relate to your community. No, but it certainly helps, especially if your time is limited. So... Think about a streamer that only has a five-hour stream, right? 
that's five hours. The average Twitch viewer watches for 90 minutes a day. So that 90 minutes has to overlap with your five hour stream time. So it's kind of small. I mean, you don't give them opportunity to watch before they go to work. You don't really give them an opportunity to watch when they come home unless it lines up exactly. So the longer you stream, the less necessary schedule is because if you're streaming for 12 to 14 hours, 12, 16 hours, you know, people can pop in whenever. They're still mm. going to come see you. You're still going to be alive. When you stream a few hours a day, it's really important people know when you start and end because I will tell you the longer, and Twitch actually looks at this when they determine whether you're going to get partnered or not. They look at the time you stream and they make sure the numbers go up the longer you stream. Like oh. if they see a big boost and then they see it decline, that's a red flag for them. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's you so you would you raid, say, people left. would you say it's better than to stream in small increments so that you, because the thing is, if you do a long stream, you know, like you'll get those fluctuations like, oh, the people in the East are waking up, so they'll come check you out, but then they have to go to work. So would you say it's better to do smaller increments of streams than those long hour streams? The people I've seen succeed with small stream, small increments, uh, short time frame streams have had a considerable amount of content on YouTube these days. Mm -hmm. So like the other stream coaches, they have YouTube content, which drives people from there to their actual stream. And also you get the go live note annotations on the YouTube content that drives them to Twitch. Social media is important, more important if you're got that minimal time frame too, because you need to use it to inform people when you start and why they should watch. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really important to do everything you can to get people in the door when you first open. So I wouldn't say it's more or less advantageous. I would say it all depends on how much time you have because at the end of the day, the most efficient use of your time, if you also work, is probably just to go home and start up Twitch, right? Maybe do your social media post during the day, do some social media interaction, and then go home and start up Twitch. If that's the strategy, I would say a, a calendar schedule that doesn't deviate is really going to be an asset. But I would say if you stream a really a long time on Twitch, your start time doesn't matter as much. Mm. Oh, um, don't change it though. <laughs> I, I didn't talk about the things I did that were stupid after I got partnered. One of the things I did that was stupid after I got partnered is I changed my schedule by 12 hours. Ooh, so you had That's to change really region strange. basically. Right. So you remember that 50% I cited before about change of game? Added another 50% onto that for changing the schedule, especially 12 hours. I still have a long stream, so people are able to tune in for a limited amount of time, but like I lost most of my Australian viewers. I maybe gained some EU viewers, um, but I lost a lot of my American viewers because I couldn't view while they were at work. Not all of them. Mm -hmm. I went from a sleep stream to being a morning stream. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> and so, don't do that and also change your game. <laughs> yeah, it's just too much. It's 100% decrease, guys. So Donut is asking <laughs> what sites uh, you use for your analytics other than the Twitch stream and channel. Sully Gnome. Sully Gnome. Can you post that on the chat if you know it? Because I have no idea how to spell that. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. In the guides on my own website is an explanation of how to use Sully Gnome because it's very detailed. So it's a very, very data analytic approach. But it's the best tool to read the Twitch API that I've found. Twitch API is just all the back end data. It's like who's streaming for what amount of time, what game. Who got has many follows, um, you know, and how games overall are performing on Twitch. Interesting. So that's what you look at. Okay, cool. Yep. And there's a game picker tab there. So if you go to the game on the left side, there's a game picker link. And then if you put in the roundabout concurrent average that you're usually at, it'll recommend games. But it's important to understand what each column is. A lot of people come back and they're like, I don't know how to read this. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really understand it. I think it's just because I'm, I don't know, a bit blonde. It's not your fault. I've just spent a shit ton of time with it. So that's what I try to explain on the website. It's just like this, this, and this. How, so you mentioned that you're a stream coach, correct? How long, like what got you into that? I hate that word. I'm so sorry, but that's what you use in your profile. I know, I don't want to be though. I use it because I do give streaming information. And I've mm. been doing this a long time, um, but I don't charge for it. 
I'd rather be considered a mentor, but it's easier to think of somebody as a coach than a mentor. Mm. So. Can confirm. I've I've messaged Gull uh, quite 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 a few times. I'll leave him a message, you know, like, "Hey, how you doing? I'm, see. you know, oh. having a bad day with streaming. How, do you have any recommendations? Rec, rec, rec recommendations? How I can, you know, up my streams or something? Or what do you think about my my channel? And then I'll go to bed because we have a different time zone. I'll wake up and I'll have like pages. <laughs> Elsie, yeah. 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 Oh god. Um, it's like right. First thing. <laughs> as as it helps. <laughs> it's great though. It is. It does help a lot. Um. So Donut asks, how much has being active on social media, such as Twitter, helped you, and how do you go about it? It's a good question. Twitter sucks. <laughs> do you tweet? There's... I. It took me a long time to learn how to tweet. I still don't know how to tweet. Uh, Twitter is like the tabloid of our time, IMO. I don't have any evidence right now to suggest that Twitter helps you grow your stream. I know stream will help you grow your Twitter, but I have no evidence to suggest the alternative occurs. I know people with Twitters that are massive and uh, not much to show for it on Twitch. That's, that's, a, that's a fair point. I've, I've seen like, I think, how did I? This person started following our account on Twitter. So I opened the account and this guy had something like a couple of thousand followers on his Twitter account. Like, thanks everyone for the support. You can find me on on you I think he's on YouTube or Twitch or something. Yeah, he's like new to Twitch. And he's got like a couple of thousand followers. So I just opened up his Twitch and he's not even an affiliate and he had like maybe 20 or 30 followers mm. Mm. and it's like uh your twitter's doing great because it's it's easy to follow somebody on twitter it's you can do it with minimal effort you don't even have to pay attention to the shit that they're sharing but i mean to grab somebody on twitch that's that's work yeah <laughs> that's yeah. that's work especially advertising yeah yeah because advertising on Twitter is hard because they have to go from Twitter to Twitch to follow. It's not like yep, easy just to follow. That's what we talked about earlier. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the content's fundamentally different. Twitch is long form, five to eight hours, five to 12 hours. Yeah. Twitter is like, I, I have 15 minutes while I'm in the restroom to read this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you're just going to have going live tweets, I don't think it's much help if somebody all. figured out a way to add like a twitch follow button to, to a twitter feed that like an integration fantastic. that <laughs> yeah. would oh my god that would be amazing because like for me a lot of time if i see a stream on twitter post i'm like oh that looks cool but i don't have time to go onto twitch right now and check them out you know it would be cool if you could just press it and check them out when they're on and you're available you know twitter think about it because it isn't because borderlands 3 is doing a twitch twitter integration they should you know build off of that um, so what social medias do you use then if you don't use Twitter, Twitter, Instagram? No, I use Twitter. I just don't like it. Mm. <laughs> I, I consider it a necessary evil, um, because that's where game developers will contact you. And that's like one of their first stop shops for a game developer to be interested in a streamer. One of the first things they'll go look at is, you know, are they shit posting on their Twitter? Okay. They're not shit posting. Do they have a social media following? Okay. And then they'll DM the person. It's like their first line of defense. Mm. And then they'll probably look at your uh, your streamer page for your streamer analytics. But it's it's it is required. I just you know I Not think sure people have been learning how to use Twitter from like somebody like Ninja, or learning how to use Twitter from celebrities, where they'll they'll post like low quality. <laughs> The plus low quality and low time requirement content. It's like, I just ate pizza, six thousand likes, and people take cues from that, and they're like, I just ate a burger, just ate pizza. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so besides Twitter, you said you use Instagram. Do you think Instagram's good to use? Instagram is much easier to grow on. I found. Um, I feel like Instagram's only good if there. you have the partnership, so they can do the swipe up. Because without the swipe up, it's the same issue where they have to click the link 
you know, and go yeah, through. I think it's just a function of time, though. They don't require, like, a certain amount of interaction. I think I got it after a few months. But all I was doing is I was going to conventions that I was already intending to attend because I'm a Twitch personality. So I'll go to the conventions and I'll take pictures of cosplayers and put them up on... It's not born if they agree. <laughs> see <laughs> uh so twitter instagram what about do you do snapchat and question do you have premium snapchat and how much per month <laughs> <laughs> really are we gonna go there now <laughs> i can Again. make a recommendation for tiktok content though TikTok oh, is really? Really nifty thing. but you can do it because you got the voice some of us sound like dying walruses on cocaine voice. skull yeah <laughs> you don't need the voice you just need you need creativity on tiktok tiktok is replete with actual funny content if you take some time to scroll through some there's a vast amount of stuff that's just like trash obviously so tiktok is literally yeah. vines what the hell yeah. is tiktok i've never heard of tiktok what happened to vines why did vines die and tiktok grow <laughs> but why i what? feel so old so the one thing that TikTok does really well, oh, and it's the only enough. reason that I'll recommend it here, is that it exports to Twitter and Instagram Ooh. real freaking easy. Okay. So if you make content there, you can also export it to two other places with minimal time investment. Okay, I'm TikTok. Going to download TikTok. Yeah, I'm gonna look go. at TikTok now. <laughs> I'm gonna look at TikTok it's right take time now. to grow it as it does with any social. So when you first start, it's gonna be like super quiet, but uh. If you make funny content, people really like it. Oh, uh, what about uh, Snap? Do you have a Snapchat? I hate Snapchat. I don't have Snapchat. Okay, I never good. got into it, you know, and I heard it's on the decline, but I haven't really checked. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of other social medias. What else is there? MySpace. Mm. Oh, my gosh. That's the list. I don't know. <laughs> no, Half the chat are probably like, what's MySpace, Minnie? Oh, God. <laughs> I heard if you're looking to get stalkers, then use MySpace. Okay. Oh my gosh, girls old man. Do you have Tumblr? Do you do Tumblr? I don't. No. Okay. No. Um. Yeah, I can't Thanks. verify that one. What about Facebook? Chat. <laughs> LinkedIn? No. Facebook. Facebook. Actually, LinkedIn's not terrible. I um, no see I couldn't do LinkedIn because I, I use that for interviews, professional things. I feel like community <laughs> managers and people employed in the gaming industry are all on LinkedIn. Oh, that's a good point, but I don't want like a prospective veterinarian going, Oh, look at this visit. Oh wait, they stream games all day. They make a different account. Yeah, yeah that's true. Just use your streaming name. Hmm. MySpace is uh, still a thing, no. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Oh, you asked about Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook. So Facebook's doing something really interesting. Uh, I hear. Well, a couple interesting things. One, Facebook owns Instagram. Two, and stealing your identity. Yeah, oh, that too. But yeah. you know what? I gave that away to Google and Facebook a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they they own Instagram, and what they're considering is having Instagram Live integration with Facebook Live. So like Facebook Gaming will show up on Instagram and vice versa. Oh, because they still so do, they do the story thing now too. I know they integrate the stories. So I guess that's the next thing. Yep, that's that's massive. Because if you already have an Instagram following, which is not very hard to grow as long as you have high quality pictures, that's huge. They're also considering, and they've already rolled this out in other countries. You might have experienced it yourself. They hide the likes per picture now <gasps> in certain countries. I like that. Why? They haven't rolled it out in the U.S. To, because they assume that people only upvote pictures that have high counts mm. and they want to see how it shakes out so they're doing tests in smaller uh, audiences they haven't rolled it out in the u.s i know they've rolled it out in canada they might have <laughs> rolled it out in south africa you I guys should check i i heard about that where the uh, instagram models were like throwing bitch fits about it because <laughs> when your numbers are huge that's social proof yeah social proof yeah. is like the enemy of the small person growing and like the greatest advantage of the person that's already grown. It mm. separates the large streamers from the small streamers because that's how Twitch organizes the directory. Mm. They say, well, highest numbers go higher and lowest numbers stay down. Stay there. down, down. Yep. And YouTube. With games too. Do you do YouTube? Do you do the YouTubes? Soon. I haven't used it right. And I haven't produced a video in like a year. 
and that mm. was dumb. You should, because your voice, like, if you did game coverage, <laughs> Minnie would, will totally watch you. I'll be your first sub, just for that voice. It's the second largest search engine in the world. And if you can figure out how to answer a question that a few people are asking but aren't ha doesn't have many answers to, then you can do very well on YouTube. Yeah. And if, it's one of the only platforms that has a high degree of conversion between it and Twitch. Hmm. It's really, really useful. But because you can have that link it, thing. Yes. But then you've you've you have the same issue as getting people to find your YouTube channel. They have to feed each other. Yeah. Yep. It's another time investment. It takes a long time to edit a video too. They say about an hour per minute of watchable video. You have to come up with a topic. You have to You have to do screen covers. Like it's not I actually have someone I want to invite over who does really well on YouTube besides Sid Alpha, so that's for another week, ladies. But um I've spoken to them. The amount of effort it takes, like sometimes and rendering and effects and video audit because you have to audit over the videos and quality. It's just oh yep. I don't know how I mean, he does it. It's a whole other beast. In everything. Mm. Especially nowadays. It's just like learning Twitch from the ground up. Mm. You have to learn the algorithm. You have to learn how it works. You have to learn how to produce the video. You have to learn what people watch, what they don't want to watch. Mm. Yeah. It's another time investment. So when I give, God damn it, coaching advice, <laughs> <laughs> and I say YouTube is a good avenue, that comes with the caveat that it's a good avenue if you have the time. Time is an issue. Mm. Okay, has anyone got any last questions before we jump into our break and come back with our next topic, Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire. <laughs> Led by Lady. She's down below me. She's up above me here, but down below me there. She's next to me over there. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> so, ladies, do you have any other questions before we go on break? Would you recommend um, myself and my well, my husband mostly watches a lot of um, Alpha Gaming for tips and stuff on streaming. It's actually really good. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, he recommends people that want to grow on Twitch try and grow on another platform first, and then bring your audience over, because Twitch as a platform is actually very difficult to grow on because of the saturation. Mm. He's right. But he also knew YouTube before he knew Twitch. <laughs> yeah, he did. Mm. So just like he knew what ran the YouTube algorithm, you can read some of the guides that I've produced that I've produced to understand the Twitch algorithm and understand how to pick a game where you appear at the top of the directory that still has interest for it. Because you could also pick a dead game that nobody's interested in and be the number one streamer for, you know, Hello Save Kitty game. Island Adventure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I would say both are viable. He's certainly proved that it works for sure. That's one of the reasons I'm also interested in getting into YouTube. I should have done it years ago. But I will say also, on other platforms, your content won't disappear into the ether if nobody sees it. Whereas if you're on Twitch and you're streaming to zero to five people and, you know, once your stream is over, mm -hmm. probably no one's going to watch the VOD. Like it might as well not exist at that point. Mm -hmm. If you make content on YouTube, it's not going to vanish for all eternity after your live session or after your video is done. Especially if you focus on evergreen content, which is content that's always useful to all creators or all people interested in a specific topic. So just mm -hmm. something to mull over. Interesting. Uh, Butler asks, why don't you put your stream advice on Udemy, which someone, uh, Snowy said, is like an online courses? I'm not opposed. Seems like a good idea. Hmm. U -D -E -M -I? Udemy. 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 I have no Udemy. idea what that was. I was like, well, guys, what's I've that? never heard of that. Me neither. <laughs> Something I've also considered is doing the the Fiverr route, but I don't want to charge people. Oh, I already know Fiverr stream. Mm. I would rather use. What about it. Patreon? Also a possibility. I don't want to charge people that already come to the stream because I'm already like they're already giving me value. They're giving me their attention. Mm. 
But if somebody finds me off Fiverr and they've never seen me before and they're like, I want a coaching session, that gives me an opportunity to over deliver, which I fucking do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they'll ask a question and like Luna said, they'll wake up with three pages worth of text. So I don't know. Um, Hailstorm asks, what's your thoughts on drinking on stream? I don't know, Hail, what is your thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, please. <laughs> um, people usually find it fun. I guess if it doesn't get like dangerous and people aren't worried and there's no like angry belligerence and fucking knock yourself out. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I think people people are scared with coming to my street stream when I've been drinking because of their ears. <laughs> Oh, get a compressor. <laughs> a big one. <laughs> Compressors are I great. I get loud. I get very loud. They let you like... do this. Ah! And it doesn't peak. Interesting. <laughs> My compressor doesn't work. I need to, yeah, I need to work out that shit. Uh, so partners are allowed to you? Uh, allowed to drink? I think so, because Google does drinking streams every Friday and Saturday. That could, yeah, and like... if you want to share with your cat, that's fine too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've got four cats to share with. <laughs> you don't have you don't have the thought shield, Nero. You don't have a thought shield. Stop. I don't have the thought shield. I know. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think the compressor is a filter on your stream thing, right? And you can get one for the mic in the settings. Yep, there's an um, OBS digital version, and they sell uh, hardware compressors too. Mm -hmm. I use a program called Reaper, well, an add-on called Reaper, and that has uh, compressors and uh, levelers and all sorts of things I need to look at again. Work it out. An equalizer, yeah, because I, I can make my voice. It also can, you can change your voice with it as well to make it sound a little bit more smoother. Oh, is that yeah. how they do it? Can you imagine those oh, like, thought streamers actually don't sound as soothing as they are? Like, they're like, all like, hey, guys. And then we're laughing, like, hi, guys. Like, watch. <laughs> watch. The truth has been revealed. It's all compressors. <laughs> exposed. Exposed. <laughs> uh, Minnie needs a condenser. Damn, guys. Y'all are being mean now. I know I do need one, especially when I'm playing R Remnant and there's a fucking Reaper pre Mantis <laughs> around the corner waiting for me. Um... I think I didn't miss any questions. So, guys, we're going to take a quick bake. A quick bake. We're a quick bake. We're going to get back. That's yeah, something I do all bake. stream. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to take a little quick break. If anyone has any questions, when we come back, we'll answer them. We have Skull as our guest. So, Skull is a mentor or coach in stream. He has a lot of good yeah. tips and tricks to this. Lena, can you post that link one more time? Um, so go check out his channel and we will be right back with if there's any more questions and with our final topic run by Lady Liar Liar Pants on Fire. Be right back guys. Hey guys, we are back and baked as I've always. Got my, <laughs> I've got my wine handy. She's got a wine. Um, so yeah, Skull, thank you so much for giving us those tips and tricks. Uh, guys, if you do have questions randomly pop up during the next topic, more than welcome to just pop it in. We'll stop the conversation. For that, before we continue, my camera's going weird again. I'm going to pop in the link to our Discord where we post, you know, who our next guest is, uh, topics, and if anyone has topics for us, you guys can post it over in our Discord. And obviously, you can find all the respective hosts of the show, our whiners. I spelled that wrong. Um, can you believe this is my channel? <laughs> you can find the whiners down at their respective Twitch channels. Please go check them out. They are as lovely as they are. Probably even more on their own channel. They just want me to suffer. <laughs> you need to change um, later ladies. Later yes. Oh. Lady, can you post your new link down below since they did change it over? Uh, so, and then once Lady's done that, she's going to hit us into the new yeah. topic. Pathological, pathological liars. She had to think about so, that. <laughs> I I had an an occurrence now in the week, and then I actually remembered um, something else that happened to us to, to us myself and machine uh, a few months ago. 
Mm. So I'm going to speak about the one that happened a few months ago. So we were talking about trolls. And uh, just give me two seconds. She has confirmed her sources. <laughs> Sorry, machine, machine's a bit loud. Uh, so Quiet basically... <laughs> Basically, there was this guy that came over from uh, another streamer stream into my stream. Mm -hmm. And uh, good guy, very, very nice dude, didn't have any problems. He wasn't a troll or anything. And then he started, he joined my Discord. And then he started posting in both Discords about these weird things that were happening in his life. Now, at the time... My dad was very ill because my dad had cancer. And a f like a few weeks later, my father passed away. And then he mentioned about his stepdad that also had cancer and then passed away. And I didn't think much of it. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And during that time that I was dealing with my father's death, I wasn't very active with a lot of people. So I didn't really think about like, oh, I'm sorry, your stepdad passed away. But then the common friend being vaccine, she sent me a message saying that a few of her followers had done research or looked into this guy because he always used to come up with these stories that didn't sort of make sense. Like the first story was about uh, him and his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He had uh, some sort of cancer. When I mentioned my dad had cancer, that he was now given like the clear bill of health, something to do with uh, his prostate or something because he couldn't have kids and he always wanted kids. And then apparently after years of trying, his girlfriend then fell pregnant. They then got engaged and he posted pictures of like the wet, the engagement ring. And then a few weeks later, she had fallen down the stairs and then she lost the baby. But it oh. was like, he spoke about it and then he just brushed it off. Like, it was nothing. It was like a joke, like a, like a couple of hours late after talking about it. Mm. And then the whole thing where my dad passed away and then all of a sudden uh, he had to go to, he stays in the States, like had to go to the other side of the States and uh, go and see his stepfather because his stepfather was very ill. And then apparently he missed the flight and then he couldn't see him. And then his stepfather passed away. And that's when Vaccine messaged me to say that this guy's actually been talking a lot of shit. And none of his stories match up. And the pictures he's been posting, like the, what's that scan of like the, the baby? That was Hello. fake. The ring was fake. His stepfather's story is probably fake. The girlfriend probably never existed. And then it makes me think, like, you get these type of people that literally, they come into your chat, mm. they tug on your heartstrings, and they'll talk about stuff that's relatable. Because, I mean, for me, that all that shit I was going through personally, and then he makes up these things because he wants to seem like, he wants that attention. He wants that reaction out of you. Feel sorry for The psychological and, profile of a sociopath or somebody yeah, who does it's, it, it, Yeah, I can't understand why people yeah. would do that. And, and we just ended up blocking him because it's actually mentally and emotionally draining to deal with somebody like that, especially when you have shit of your own to deal with. And you don't actually know how to deal with someone like that because you never really know. It's the internet. You don't know when people are lying. You can't see their faces. I mean, you as a streamer, like at face value, that's where you have to draw the fine line between don't message me about your personal shit. Yes, I feel sorry for you, but that's where we draw the line. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because I was going through a lot, it was more relatable. So he would message me, I'll be like, sympathize, and I know how you're feeling. And then he's like, oh, you should message me if you feel down or whatever. But I never really got that far to tell him about what's really going on with me. He would always be the one to message me first. And... You can't see through people's bullshit on the internet. How do you deal with somebody like that? And how do you know when somebody's actually lying to you? Or how do you deal with somebody that's a pathological liar? 
that would lie to get a reaction because they're not getting the kind of attention that they want. And that kind of lying is only beneficial to them. It's not beneficial to anybody else. Because How it affects you. Find out you. Whether somebody's a pathological liar. You, you can't. <laughs> Ask them details. Keep track of the details. Yeah. But honestly, the best true. solution is just not to get involved. Mm. Usually. Like, we talked Except about this Except when before. you end up dating one. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> we yes. talked about this before. <laughs> um, with the trolls and then the oversharing and, like, something that just, the red flags that just kept popping up for me when you're telling the story was the oversharing. And I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and be like, your community is probably pretty open with their life events, is my guess. Fair? For a sociopath, that's like walking into a candy store. Yeah. Finding vulnerable people willing to share personal details. For somebody that's motivated to get those details or get on somebody's good side, that's like a gold mine. Finding people willing to interact with them and share details about their life. Like, so first red flag would be they just joined Discord and now they're in your DMs sharing personal details. Your first question should be, why me? Like, mm -hmm. why are they sharing this with me without knowing me that way? Yeah. I never really put it past much because he had been a viewer of Vaccine, which is now our friend, for quite a while. So it's just, it's now a mutual viewer because he's now supporting us. He even subbed to us as well which I find like it's it's nice of him. He didn't have to. And he had felt that he, he wanted to befriend us. And I felt that all that details that uh, we had been revealing about our personal lives, which myself and my husband, we, we're quite open with our community with what goes on in our life, you know, because I don't have anything to hide because essentially when you go through something personally and you don't know where to draw the line when you start streaming, people can see something's wrong. Yeah. So sometimes we're more open about it and it's easier to talk about it because then essentially you feel better and it doesn't affect you as much. So we tend to tell people what's going on. We won't talk about like real, like the real personal shit you don't want to deal with. But I mean like stuff about things that people can relate to, which is usually easier to talk about. But this guy, I, I don't know. He he just had it. He was fine tuned to to the bullshit that he was feeding. And it makes you think that this person, this persona that he put up didn't actually exist because he's obviously been doing it for some time. Uh, to tap into a real life event, um, I spoke to the ladies about the shit that's been happening at my work where um, this guy was caught with stealing. And then uh, about two weeks later, my other colleague was arrested for stealing. And we've been having ongoing problems with her because we've uh, come to the conclusion that she's a pathological liar so she's we don't actually know what her story is but she's been creating these fake profiles on all sorts of groups related to the industry i'm in uh to basically boost herself so she creates a fake profile and then talks about herself in as if as if she's somebody else and the shit that she that she was caught for, she basically pinned it to the other guy, saying it was him. But she's also been tied down to like a lot of illegal stuff. So she's been digging her grave deeper and deeper over the past few weeks. But it also makes me think, if if you are Mini May, for example, if you're Mini May, you Proclaimed to be such a good-hearted person. You're always feeling sorry for somebody. It's meanie, May. Meanie. I'm mean. I'm meanie, May. <laughs> and you create a profile called Nero. So you'll be Nero and you'll be like, Oh, guys, have you seen Minnie May? She's so amazing. This and that and the other. Oh. In the meantime, I'm actually praising myself. Mm. People don't know this. 
and People have been they doing just, this on Reddit for years. They they yeah. just feed they feed the lies, and it's like, at what point do you actually? How do you mentally keep up with all the shit that you're feeding everybody else? Because you got to keep feeding the same story to make sure that it doesn't come back to you. Hmm. Yeah, that does sound like way it's, too much. It's tiring. <laughs> But it's not Don't tiring for them because it's their whole, like, pathological yeah. lie isn't something that just happens to you one day. It's something that starts from a young age. Like, I've had, a, we had a pathological liar in our class. Like, she will come up with the most ridiculous, like, she will take photos and post them on Facebook and be like, oh, I took this photo, you know, da 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 And then we would scan the photo and it'll come up, it was posted five years prior by some scientist in the Netherlands or something. We're like, mm-hmm. Or she was going to move to Australia and go have a bunny farm. Mm-hmm. Like, but the thing is, like, it's something they get better at the more they do. And it's like, I think, I don't think they can control some of it. Like, sometimes when opportunity arrives, I think it starts off with, like, they get in trouble and they lie about it. Then they realize, oh, that was easy. I can lie about other stuff. And it builds up and it builds up and then... It gets to the point where they get so surrounded by lies, that's the only thing they know. And some people use those lies to get attention. Like, I don't get me wrong, I feel like maybe this person, the fact that he sub to, they sub to you and all that, it's, they, they do care. Their heart is in the right place in terms of caring. It's just they feel like the only way they're going to get attention and someone caring about them is to spindle these lies, you know? Maybe it's to make an alternative personality that because they think that they won't be liked for who they really are, or they're just so used to living a lie that's the only thing they know is truth, you know? And it's just so easy to lie nowadays on the internet. I could, hell, look at catfishing. I could literally go online right now and be like, I am five foot five <laughs> and have a D cup boobs and I supermodel on the side and like people will believe it until it's proven wrong you know I just I don't know I can't explain why people do it I think it's just it's something that has been built up over the years and the reason they can keep it well tapped is because they've had so many years of experience doing it I also think that when you start doing it you also realize what people will and won't believe mm -hmm. I Talked about the primacy effect earlier, where people mm. tend to believe the first thing they're told about somebody or an event. Like, why wouldn't you? Somebody's telling me about this. Why would they be lying? So mm. by default, we're programmed to believe. But at the same point, that person is realizing how easy it is to deceive people and then bring it into the environment of Twitch. So like somebody takes that, take that, the, the, the person that you were talking about before that was like, yes. we went through all this cancer, cancer, cancer. You know, medical bills, medical, medical, medical bills. Hey, we have this GoFundMe. Could you advertise it on your... <laughs> That's something to watch out for, too. Mm. Yeah, but I, I... I think that it's also a... a, 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 a mental problem. My brother, for one, has... Um, a bit of a mental problem and he lies a lot and he can't help it i mean he's told some stories that have gotten some other people into really really really, really big tr trouble but because of his his mental issues guys yeah. guys don't look now but we've got a bot we have a bot <laughs> What? Re-flame. Re, re Re-flame. <laughs> Guys. Oh. <laughs> Just ignore the bot, guys. Sorry, carry on, Luna. <laughs> yeah, but I, so, so I don't... With, 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 uh, with, with situations like someone lying to get, the, you know, kicks out of it or, you know, to try and get uh into emotions is you know kind of different to someone who has a bit of a men mental issue and cannot help it or they don't realize that they're actually lying and mm. not just it's second nature then like they don't register what they're doing sometimes like sometimes it just like 
it comes out and they don't think of it as a lie. I think it, they honestly, some people believe what they say is true. You know, I don't know about your guy. I feel like some of the stuff he's saying was really extreme. Maybe some of that stuff was happening, but he elaborated to being it a lie. You know, maybe he tried to make it a little bit more than it is. But there are some people like, uh, I think it was in 2013, don't take my word for that, where a streamer had lied to his community about being uh, disabled, being in a wheelchair. Oh, the guy in the wheelchair? Mm -hmm. And he got caught. Standing up? Yeah, he got caught (laughs) because he thought he turned his camera off and stood up. Oof. People had subbed, had donated to medical, to helping him. He had been doing it for a year, you know, and he got caught. I don't know if anyone got their money back, but I feel like that's different. I feel like that is someone using and abusing kindness of, and that's why a lot of people don't have trust. Mm -hmm. Your guy, it seems like he's doing it differently. He's not asking for money on that. I think it's more of the emotional gain from it. And I think, I don't know if it's him just think overreacting about things or just wanting attention or seeing that other people get attention from these scenarios and he never got it and he wants it. I don't know. There's just, I feel like lying, there's lying to financially and abuse and gain and then there's lying to get, you know, attention and or not knowing full heartedly what you're doing. And I think that's what your guy was. Like, I don't think he was doing it to harm because if it was, I would feel like there would have been more people hurt or f- like, um, like taken away from, from his lies. His lies were more just, you know, because he did sub to you, he supported you. I think it was just attention. It wasn't him going out and seeing he like um skull said he saw you were kind he saw the community was kind and he used that to get that affection it wasn't like he was like this community will give me money that i can scam it wasn't a scam lie it was just a need lie it's only a lie if you mm-hmm. get caught mm. yeah it's like the same lie. Yeah, if you tell yourself something enough you'll eventually believe it believe it and it's true, like sometimes people mentally take their lie and imagine it and it becomes a memory because it could be traumatic. I know that some people who go through huge traumatic things, they tell themselves a lie to get over it to the point where they actually suppress that memory and replace it with a lie. And it's actually used in therapy. I remember I had PTSD and uh, my therapist used, it wasn't like a full-blown lie, but they use another memory imagery to replace my traumatic one to help me through it so when i get triggered by a linguistic programming there we go Mm -hmm. it's so that when i get that response like a stimulus from something instead of my neurons reacting to the negative memory it replaces it with this this goofy thing that you replaced it with and it's it feels weird because it's like it's mind control in a way it's like like you took away this memory from me but at the same time like it's good like i still know my memory's there but when i get triggered i don't think about it I have to think about it physically to like, not physically, you know, I have to put my mind to it. It doesn't just come to me randomly. So I feel like that's what's happening. They just rewire themselves to believe in everything they say. Maybe it also comes down to when, how you're raised, maybe traumatic experiences that they feel that they need to replace it with something so that they don't think about it like what you said with what you've gone through so i don't know growing up not having a parent figure or something like where your parents broke up split up having someone die or something that when you're younger you actually don't know how to deal with those kind of emotions emotions so they put themselves in a situation where everything is perfect and they tell themselves that everything is fine and this is how it actually is and they believe it and they progress with that lie and it's probably just more damaging when it starts at a younger age because it just gets worse and worse and worse up to a point where do you actually believe anything this person tells you Mm. Nero, yeah. do you have any experience with people? Oh like no, these? no! Please, do not <laughs> even start. The, like, two, I dated two, two, two guys. You learned from the first one? No, obviously not. Obviously not. Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, 
No, it. The the second one was a lot worse though. Like, I'm not gonna mention names or anything, but like he he was also a gamer, mm. and what what he went like I knew I knew this when I started dating him. So I, I mean I should have seen it coming a long time, but I, I guess love blinds you what what not. And um, what this guy wanted to do, he wanted to go through a gender change, right? So he wanted to become transition. a girl, which mm. is mm-hmm. transition. Fine, sure. Uh, that does not affect his personality, except his personality is utter shit, <laughs> which he hides. <laughs> so, you know, th- that was kind of, yeah. So what would happen is, we we played a lot of GTA together, and I remember specifically the one guy um, was like totally into the fact that he's because on GTA he would be like, no, I'm a girl, I can't use mic because it's broken or I'm I'm too nervous or whatnot, whatnot, because obviously they would realize that he's a guy. Guy. So, yeah. And what he what he did is he told he like kind of started talking with this guy mm-hmm. quite a lot. And like I kind of like looked at the conversation and he tells me, he tells me, oh no, this guy like kind of asked me out on a date. And I'm sitting there like a a date? Send me the messages, you know, show me. And he is like flirting with this guy and whatnot whatnot and i'm like you know what um i think you should maybe just tell him that you're just friends to like because in like he's kind of like lying to this person about being a girl catfishing him yeah catfishing like totally for the attention and i'm sitting there like you know what just tell him you're friends because because he's like my ex is like, no, we're just friends. What not, what not? And I'm like, okay, well, then tell him. And we argued for two weeks straight about this one thing. About how how he's like, no, I don't want to tell him because it might ruin our friendship. And I'm like sitting there like... Yeah, I have to ruin? ask, why did you put up with it for so long? No. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to, I like, no, like, after that, I think it was not even two weeks, broke it off. And then I got stalked for six months. By him? Yeah. Wow. Issues much. Issues. <laughs> issues. Very much issues. And like, in the, like, and you know what? He actually spread stories about me. Like, I remember going to Rage, and we had a mutual friend. Not anymore, because I'm not friends with him anymore. Like, and and he comes to me, he's like, yeah, just don't hang out with this crowd, because they might not like you. And I'm like, why? And he's like, no, this this person has been spreading, your ex has been spreading stories about you. Oh, my ex did, did that as well. I was like, just because he was salty, okay, to not the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel so, like our next topic um, needs to be old relationships. Holy hell, guys! <laughs> <laughs> oh, can of worms, can of worms. <laughs> yeah. So, Damn. Yeah. Uh, and like, eventually, when my ex did tell this person, like, after me forcing him after two weeks, tell him. No, we're just friends. He sends a message back to me, like, why did you make me do that? I feel so shit now. I'm sitting there like... Excuse me? <laughs> Hello? Uh, okay. And then you get, yeah, the the, yeah. The, the, the the people that will do that, um, mm-hmm. and then turn it around and try to make you feel guilty for of course. their feelings. Yes. That's exactly, and it's classic narcissist behavior. behavior. He was like a textbook narcissist, and I didn't pick it up. 
obviously because you don't want to in the beginning you know in the beginning you're like got the goggles blind. yeah goggles. you don't see it mm. your blinkers don't work mm. and it's so actually the hearts in your eyes <laughs> yeah and it's actually very difficult to get out of that relationship because everything you say everything you do they'll turn it right back to you like no it's not my fault it's your fault you know mm. and you'll find that way and also you'll cut off ties with your friends uh you'll cut off your support yeah. structure mm. that's a big mm. red flag Guys, if you're so, ever yeah. in a relationship, chat, if you guys are ever in a relationship where you feel that you're slowly being isolated from your family, from your friends, your comfort zones, where you feel that your person is making, you feel like you're the fault for the wrong things in your relationship, it is never all your fault. There is always a 50 50 mm -hmm. or sometimes. Look into that relationship, please. It is not a good relationship. It's never a good relationship. Um, I just think that's, that's very important. That's a lot of relationships are like that. It's abusive. Even though it doesn't sound like it is very abusive, they make you feel yeah. shit, they bring you down, and then to the point where you feel you're so isolated that they're the only thing you tell yourself, I have to stay with them because they're all I have. I yeah. have nine years of that. Oh, Luna, I feel for nine you. Nine years, but that's how and why I started getting into gaming. It's because it was my escape. escape. And uh, I had, I wasn't allowed to basically phone my friends. He, this guy wanted to know who I was talking to, why I was talking to them, what am I talking about? He wanted my password to everything. Uh, if we would go out, um, he would say, okay, we're going for one drink and then, we're, and then we're, we're, we're coming home. If I would walk off to talk to someone, he would follow and intercept. And yeah, I, I got to a point where I went to my grand and I was like, look, I, I can't take this anymore. I mean, he, he, I was, he, he would phone my work. I would have to go uh, for, for extra training, which he would take me to. Now, because he didn't want to take me to the extra training, he would phone the work and make up stories why I can't go to training or he would pretend to be someone else and just cause trouble for me, which made my work situation a lot worse than, than, than what he needed. You know, than, than, than needed to be. And eventually I just, I had enough. Mm. So... I moved home, he moved with me because, um, but then trying to get the, yeah, anyway, long story short, I met my, my husband now, I kicked him out <laughs> <laughs> and now we're happy. Now you're happy. What about you, yeah. Skull? Well, you know. Have you, do you have any horrors, horror relationships or pathological lie, lo pathological liars? <laughs> <laughs> Just the streaming ones, mm -hmm. not personal relationships. Not personal. Then again, I tend to read books like How to Spot the Lie and mm. so you prepare uh, yourself what everybody for it. says. Yeah. Well, I had one bad experience and I overcompensated by educating myself on literally every fucking red flag under the sun that could possibly <laughs> be triggered. So I don't know. I'm skeptical of people's behavior in general. <laughs> you haven't gotten that impression yet. <laughs> See, I always try to see the best in people. Like, my husband hates it because he knows it's going to be my... He tells me it's my downfall in a lot of things. Like, when people come to me, even if... Like, I always say, like, you could do the worst thing to me. And I've done this so many times where people have absolutely done the most horrific things to me. But I'll still put my hand out to them if they need help. And I know it's not a good thing. And I know it's asking to go down the same rabbit hole. But at the same time, I just keep telling myself, like, and I know it's probably not right, but like, I'm like, if I was in this situation, and I felt the way they did and I, not like in terms of what they did, but in terms of them needing help, I would someone want that because like I was bullied a lot. Like I felt really lonely and that's why I started gaming. You know, I never fell in with people in my school and I always tell myself, if I ever met someone who felt the way I did, I would never want someone to feel that way. I want to help them. I want to make them. And I know that's like the worst thing ever. Like, my heart is too big, and I try, I try to fit everyone into it, and I know I can't. And I feel guilty when I can't help people. But at the same time, that's when people, I've had relations with people use and abuse me, or they come back to me when it suits them, and I allow them to, and I still do. But, I don't know. 
I just I know that's the worst thing I should be doing, and I know Skull's like, girl, I'm gonna throw so many books at your face right now. No, I don't <laughs> do the same thing. It's but just, I always... it's hard for me not. It's like how I've been hardwired. The way I was raised was to see the best in people. Same. That's why it was so devastating to find out people could be such scumbags. But mm. by the same token, I'm always. I'll help everybody, but I need to understand what their motivation is. I don't even give a shit if it's selfish, but I need to know what it is. Mm. Like, if somebody oh. comes to me with their problems day after day after day, and I keep giving them this kind of attention to help them solve their problem, that's a red flag over time. I don't know how long of a time, <laughs> however long it takes me to realize it, mm. but it's a red flag that they're looking to get that specific emotion. And mm. in no personal relationship is somebody always looking to get one specific emotion so when it's that crystal clear or when it's that consistent that's another red flag Thanks. it's like are they coming to me to whine again <laughs> again and again are, are they going to share you something again. happy what do you want does anything good happen to this person <laughs> <laughs> ever oh god yeah. no, I'm, I'm the same I always give somebody the benefit of the doubt I'm never horrible, especially if, if you don't know that person. You don't know what they're actually going through without getting to know them. Mm. So the same with when it comes to our channel, like you'll see somebody, they'll maybe set off a few red flags, but I'll be like, I'm going to just see where this goes. But machine will be like, itchy ticker figure, got a bang, got a bang, got a bang. I'm like, just chill, relax. <laughs> chill. <laughs> just He's got the trigger just, finger. Just wait. Yeah, he's got the trigger finger. I'm I'm the one that's like got a soft heart. So usually I try and see like, are you being legit an asshole or are you actually just, you just don't have a way with words. And usually I'm wrong. Usually he's right. But <laughs> I hate those moments because I mean, they're like, I told you so. I'm like, I was trying to be nice. I was, thinking, I was like, I used to be like that too. <laughs> But that's your demeanor at the end of the day. When you try and just give somebody the benefit of the doubt, then you're like, why Why am I so nice? <laughs> why do I have to be such a nice person? You know? And then people like that actually end up taking advantage of you. They do. They do. Yeah. Understanding why somebody's doing something helps. Mm. Just that's to know why... why it's you. That's yeah. why I I I'm like I'll give you a chance, but don't be an asshole, you know. Like you're opening yourself up to strangers being on Twitch already. Mm. The last yeah, thing you want to do is is come off <laughs> as an asshole to somebody you don't even know, because then that chases away a lot of other people that's already in your stream. That's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> it's, I, it's not, I... but it's it's not easy for. For myself, I mean, my channel's very small, so it's it's yeah. different when you have your regulars there, but then you have a few new people that you want to keep, and then you get like these assholes that come along, and I guess it's how you deal with it. That always remind your community that you're protecting them by getting rid of the people that upset you. Up mm. uh, that's mm. actually a good thing to say. Yeah, Skull, when you said don't have that, like, you know, have that line, don't allow yourself to be, open, like, no. I was like, I do that. I can't help it. I let my viewers in all the time. I let them message thing. me. It's just, I, it's, it's a like... new streamer thing. <sighs> Did you ever talk to somebody who's a really massive partner and notice how protected they are? Oh, yeah. yeah they no. don't talk about anything personal or any, right. yeah. Then that's a function of these kind of things happening over time. It takes a toll on you mentally and emotionally the more you do it because then you're like they take a bit. Mm. 50 other people's burdens on your shoulder and your own shit to deal and with then you feel well. bad when you don't answer them or help <laughs> them and they make you feel bad for you like i'm trying like i'm only one person oh uh, god um i, I I'm, I'm very skeptical guilty that's another one that i just i grew up with it in my home so if anybody tries to guilt me into anything, I'm like, <laughs> I'm <No>. immune. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes uh, on you. Guilt is manipulation, very, friends. No, yeah, thank you. I am very skeptical about new people. Obviously, after I've experienced what all the shit, and, and 
And I, I, I was probably very mean, but this was, this was off stream. Remember that weekend where I got featured on the Blizzard launcher for like 12 hours. Yeah. That was... And then, and then the next day I, I was streaming for t 10 more hours. And then this random person messaged me on WhatsApp and she's like, hi, I'm this person. I'm like, yeah. And, and they're like, no, got your number from this person. I'm like, okay. And, and they're like, hi. And I'm like, okay, bye. Oh. And I blocked them. I was just like, I can't deal with, I can't deal with a random stranger on the internet right now. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, I'll <laughs> like, on your personal they, number. They, yeah, that was your personal yeah. phone number. Yeah. How did they get was, it? Uh, from another one of my exes. Oh. <laughs> Nira, I think like we should have a talk. Like, no. Yeah, Nira, when we're off channel, we need a... We need to talk, <laughs> you know? Um, not next week's topics, the week after that, uh, because I'm not here next week. <laughs> <laughs> can of worms, guys. Can of worms. Oh, but I was God. just like, no, I I'm not dealing with you. I'm sorry. And she's like, well, that's mean. Can't we be friends? And I just ignored it. I was like, uh -huh. sorry. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't want to. Mm. <laughs> Especially after streaming, like, for, like, a full day, basically. You're and dead. then just, like, having that message, it was just like, no. That's just creepy, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> mm -mm. Agreed. Only a few viewers have my, my, one of my mods that I trust a lot has my view. One of my good friends has my view and one of my other mods, like, two of my mods that have my number. That's mm. it. Like, and I, the only time I gave it is because I knew I could trust them. But, and it's because I talk to them every day and I hate being, I hate talking on Discord. Like, I'm awful. If you message me on Discord, give me like a month. I might respond. <laughs> I might. Even like, my, that's my, like, me, if me and my husband ever get a divorce and I get those divorce papers, I swear it's going to say because I never pick up my phone. Because I don't. <laughs> I don't answer message. I never pick up my phone. And that's like the only reason I would ever like be like that. But that's it. Like, other than that, nope. You wait five months for that message. I'm worse than Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should work for them. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I could send somebody a 50 megabyte file through Discord. It's great. <laughs> Until you get a 51 so... megabyte and have to Google it, Google Drive it. That's true. Or I get a 50 megabyte dick pic. Damn! I recognize the potential. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, eh? It's the voice! It's the voice, guys! Oh, gosh. Speaking of I've only ever received one of those. You've only received one dick pic? Only um, one! No, lucky! I <laughs> only I one! I haven't That's received one. any. You I haven't? Nope. Guys, I, you're I so lucky. I myself. was traumatized at a young age. <laughs> <laughs> Mixit was traumatizing. Going on oh Mixit. Oh and there's God. a thing. I'm like, why? We were talking about school. Me. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes. <laughs> I don't know uh, if Skull knows what mix it is, if it was. I don't think it was in America. No. Uh, nope. Okay. I remember mix it. I remember the mix it days, Minnie. <sighs> oh my god. It was, it was horrible. like a cell oh, phone text thing. It's like WhatsApp it's before like WhatsApp. Like it's WhatsApp before WhatsApp. Text thing? Basically. Yeah, yeah like but you have to log in. Like in. It was kind of, oh, stuff. it was kind of like that uh, ML, uh, IMs, like those email thingies but on full texting yeah yeah and some some dudes initial use is like this is awesome new technology groundbreaking yeah <laughs> let me send dick pics send. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to be on there to receive messages yeah so you'll come right. online and you'll have messages like oh what did they say oh no yeah. no What's darren i did not want that Any, yeah no push <laughs> notifications quality. so yeah. You had to be logged on in order to message somebody and vice versa. Oh, and you could God. leave offline messages. That was the worst, because those were the bombshells. <laughs> Go do that on WhatsApp. Can't leave offline messages. Mm. Oh, God. 
No. Dick pics. It's like, yeah. What goes through people's mind where they're like, I'm going to send a photo of my reproductive organ to this I, person. I honestly think the guys have something wrong with them to begin with. They also <laughs> don't know that generally women just don't want to look at your dick. I, <laughs> see, I think dicks are disgusting. Most women do. Yeah. I think dudes don't know it. You should <laughs> tell them. <laughs> like, we when, do. They don't listen. Like when you talk to a guy and they start bragging about their dick, I'm like, no. Also, I know, okay, you guys don't have to answer this question, but I know this might be a little too much, but big dicks? Uh-uh. No. Like, I'm I don't so get why that's a brag. I don't get what, I don't get why that's a brag. <laughs> Firstly, I'm sorry, it's painful. It is super painful. I don't want to hear about your massive dick because that's the internal for me because then I just think of a painful experience with you. Like, I don't, I know this is too much, but like, I feel like a lot of guys need to hear this. You don't need a di big dick. Big, too big of a dick is not a good thing. Sorry. Just want to tell that. people Put it that. Up on Twitter. <laughs> needs this. I just have to be honest. And I, and I tell, like, I told my husband this because he always jokes about it. I'm like, honestly, no, babe. I don't prefer it. I would, I'm glad. You're fine. You're perfect. Big? Does he smile is a, or frown after you say that? He thinks I'm lying. It's like been three years and he still thinks. No, he should stop it for you. I knew that was going to happen. But no, it's not because of that. I'm just like, he just makes that joke because, like, you know, like, oh, there's that sexy man. He's probably got a big dick. I'm like, no. It's like, no, it's not attractive. And big, sexy, ripped abs is not attractive to me. I think it's just oh, too much. What I don't know. Abs? Oh, I don't want abs. I like ABS. cuddly. ABS. <laughs> breaking. And I like breaks. Sweet. <laughs> Those I have. Do you have ABS? <laughs> oh, no. I just had to put that out on the internet for those who feel bad about their size. Don't. Aww. So don't. sweet. Like, can you talk and also me? don't send us pictures of them because you're like, oh, you like small ones? Here's one, Minnie. No, I don't want it. I, I, I see a lot of Twitter posts that are like, all guys are X, all guys are Z, all guys are Y. I fucking hate those posts, but <laughs> we need we need more ladies to just be like, we don't like pictures of your dicks. We don't care what they look Let's like. Let's start a petition, guys. Don't send go. dick pics. We don't like looking. As long like as looking. the entire male population is aware that ladies don't want to look at a dick. Let's start a But they'll still send it anyway. No dick pics. <laughs> hashtag no dick pics. Me, hashtag they look weird. Of a puppy or a kitten. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get in a girl's pants, send like puppies and kittens or tacos. That's my that's my thing. Send me a taco. How you Go for it. <laughs> to show me your pussy cat. Your you know, <laughs> If you what want to you show want? right, if you want to send me something long and juicy, send me a burrito. That's what I like. <laughs> new slogan. Awesome. Oh god, new slogan. Should be one of your follower alerts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would uh, tongue pics be better? No, that's weird. Why would you send a tongue pic? What the fuck? I don't want to see your taste buds. Streamer <laughs> feet. Oh, no. I don't, I don't want any photo of any body part of your body unless it's a cool tattoo. You want as long as it's not in the nether regions. Like I'm okay with that. But yeah, why would it, you it, like? You send a picture of a body part. You can't be sure it's like not severed on the other end. <laughs> oh, like it could just be detached. <laughs> Look at the sexy <laughs> ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dangling. Is this uh, normal? <laughs> Show me your dangler. Oh my god. <laughs> Luna's just like hiding a head in shame. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't had anything to drink. Okay, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I brought this upon us. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Look at the time! Holy shit. Oh, guys, yeah, you guys probably need to hit to bed, right? It's pretty late for you guys. My day's just starting. <laughs> Don't get drunk and get a tattoo. My first tattoo, I was drunk. My second tattoo, I was drunk. Girl, that's your Steam profile. It is. <laughs> Wait, what? 
look in the chat. <laughs> That's a I real advertisement, by the way. <laughs> wow. Wow. You should show that on stream if you can. I have. <laughs> show it now. Do it. Pressure's on. Do it. Oh, okay, but yeah, it's pretty late for the ladies. Um, Skull, you're in the Americas, right? Yep. Okay, so it's not late for him. He's fine. But I'm going to let the ladies go to bed. Uh, thinking of all the delicious, juicy burrito picks that we have implanted in their minds. Um, so... Yeah, I'm going to go play more ESO. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. So let's do a roundabout. We're going to start with our guest. Give yourself a shout out and tell us where we can find you and all interesting things. Guests shout themselves out. Oh, mm -hmm. God. Fewer people listen when it's yourself. But anyway. <laughs> uh, Skullstream on Twitch and Skullstream.com is where you can find those guides if you're a budding streamer looking for how to figure this fucking platform out. There we go. And Luna? All right, so you can find me on my channel, which is Luna underscore turn green. You can also find me on Twitter and on instagram under the same handle i don't have a fancy website <laughs> shame <laughs> wow oh shame man you don't have one f and chat boys <laughs> i'm nero you can find me on nero underscore chan i stream too much overwatch <laughs> yes <laughs> And no social medias? Come on, that was the tips. You gotta have social medias, Nuru. But Twitter is the evil. Evil! <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me at uh, Evo underscore Nuru. Doesn't even know. I think. <laughs> I don't even know my own Twitter handle, guys. What the hell? Whoopsies. <laughs> Classy. Whoops. <clears throat> that's, that's perfect. Well, Nero <laughs> discovers herself on social media. Lady. I'm Lady Bathory. You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Otterdin Gaming. I stream with my husband. We play Siege and sometimes some other games. Uh, all other handles are the same. Otterdin Gaming. Find us. Follow us. If you Love want. Love them. We like we like otters. They have a slight otters. obsession with otters. It's only a small one. Slides. Slides. There he is. There he is. Oh. <laughs> I'm seen. Hi, Machine. And I am Minime. You can catch me right here. Uh, not today, and not to. Well, oh shoot. I also want to say this. So tomorrow um, is a schedule change. So tomorrow at 8 a.m. MST and 5 p.m. GMT plus two, we have our Vampire the Masquerade show with Luna and I playing Olivia and Yay. Theodora. We are the, like, friend goals. You should check us out. Um, so that's going to be live uh, in the morning instead of Saturday. But, yeah, my name is Minimay. You can catch me here on live streams. I'm busy doing Remnant of Ashes. And to be honest, I'm going to keep playing that shit because there's so many options. Uh, and also you guys can catch me on the evil Twitters and Minimay1994, Instagram, Minimay94, and YouTube, Minimay, I think. I don't know. I haven't posted on YouTube in ages. But uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Don't forget to go check out our awesome guest, Skull, and his amazing best audio on Twitch. I thank am going to... Oh, anytime. And then he, uh, uh, also here's the Discord for the whiners. If you guys want to post and join us there. I am going to send you to someone. I haven't decided who yet. So we're going to put on any screen. So we're going to do our awkward wave and say bye. And we'll see you guys next week, Thursday. Cheers, guys. Bye. bye.